Live from Moonfield, you're watching college softball action on LHSN as the Lynchburg Hornets look to take down another ranked opponent and play host to the number 10 team in the country, the Roanoke Maroons. It's going to be an exciting battle between the Hornets and the Maroons this afternoon. We have a doubleheader coming to you on LHSN. Thank you, everybody, for spending some time with us on your Saturday afternoon. It's TJ Wingard here with you to take you through all the action. So, Lynchburg. Won four of their last six games, including three wins against ranked opponents, a sweep against number nine, Virginia Wesley, and a split earlier this week against number six, Randolph-Macon. Meanwhile, Roanoke was supposed to play on Thursday at William Peace, but that game canceled due to weather. Prior to that, had swept Shenandoah and looking to keep good things moving forward and keep the momentum on their side. Roanoke 3-3 three and three in conference play, Lynchburg 6-2. and two. So a lot on the line when it comes to conference implications. I'll show you the starting lineups for both sides, starting with the batting order for Roanoke. Leading things off is the second baseman, Mary Bostic, followed by first baseman, Jordan DeFava. And batting third, Shauna, or excuse me, Shannon Hester, the shortstop. And Hester putting together a stellar season so far this year. First in the ODAC and batting average second in OBP. And slotted in that three spot. You see the names throughout the rest of the batting lineup. And the name we want to call out, Kayla Austin, that sixth spot. And even Kate Howell, who will, excuse me, in the five spot. That middle part of the order is going to have a lot to work out today for the Maroons offensively. Roanoke will send out their ace arm. In the home half of this inning, that's Jada Carnes. Going to start today for Lynchburg is Kaylee Dorsis. First hitter she's facing. Bostic sends this to center. Catch is made by Kaylee Hackett. So to finish my point real quick, then we'll talk about the defensive alignment for Lynchburg. Middle part of this Rona quarter is going to have to come through in RBI spots. Try to provide any run support they can get for Carnes because it doesn't take a whole lot to have Jada Carnes feel uncomfortable in the circle, but and get runs against a solid pitching staff in Lynchburg. Going to need to take advantage. Popped out. Up the third base line. Just stays fair. Got over the head of Cundiff. And it's an infield single for Jordan DeFava. So DeFava on at first. Shannon Hester steps the plate. The batter made today for Dorsis is Carly Hudnall. I see infield for Lynchburg has Carly Cundiff at third. Ruby Stewart starting at short. Ashley Haley gets the nod at second with Sophie Tully. At first, first pitch is in for a strike to Hester. And to finish off the Lynchburg defensive alignment, the outfield from left to right has Jordan Brown at left, Kaylee Hackett in center, Lexi Powell in right, and the designated player is Anna Grace Terrell. Dorses winds, fires, comes inside. And they'll say it hit off the end of the bat of Hester. Tough break for Roanoke, and it's now a pitcher's count at 0-2. Up the third baseline is head coach Mike Mitchell. It was 14th season at the helm with this Roanoke softball program. And Coach Mitchell will make his way up the line. It was certainly close. Always is when you come in on the hands. Hester trying to make the case alongside head coach Mike Mitchell that should be a hit batter and there should be two hunters on with no down. Long pause in the action. And it looks like DeFava's going to get some attention from the athletics trainer. Talk more about Roanoke, number 10 team in the country. As a squad hitting 310 on the season, 377 OBP, and a slugging percentage at 446 is an offense that certainly gets the job done and littered with all conference caliber talent including cleanup hitter and catcher Rachel Rachel Serba, second team all ODAC last year as the catcher Rebecca Hensley, Michaela Austin also tabbed the second team all ODAC squad last year Hester back to the right handed batter's box trails in the count 0-2 to 
It's a gloomy Saturday afternoon to start in Lynchburg, Virginia, right around 52 degrees. The wind blowing in from right center field, and it's mostly cloudy right now. We do expect the clouds to part throughout the afternoon. Dorsus into the windup. 0-2 fouled away. Numbers this year for Kaylee Dorsus, the freshman, holds a 3.46 ERA, a 4-5 and record through 19 appearances and six starts. Has tossed 54 and two-thirds innings prior to today's action. Now up to 55 innings in total. So the 0-2 is high and away. And for Dorsus, the strikeout numbers have been strong. A Lynchburg best with 49 on the season to 15 walks. And furthermore, on the strikeout figures, Dorsus fifth in the ODAC and strikeouts per seven at 6.3. Looking for a first punch out of the day. Popped up. It'll stay in the infield. Ashley Haley steps up from second and is there to make the grab for out number two. So you look at the first inning of action so far for Dorsus. You retire Mary Bostic. Can of corn out to center field. It's a bloop single for DeFeva, who is a bat who's certainly capable of much more damage. And then an infield pop-up against Shannon Hester. Strong start to the day for Dorsus. Hit hard out towards left field and on cue. Roanoke has a very different outlook on the top of the first inning. Rachel Serba uncorks one to left field. And it's Roanoke. Striking first, and the Maroons lead 2 to nothing. Sir Ball, second team all-conference last year. Jumps on the first pitch she gets and did not miss it. Sir Ball hitting just 154 this season. Gets her first home run of the year. RBI is four and five as well. And Al Dorsis, after surrendering the first two of her afternoon, just looking to get through the inning with that being the damage. Goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the designated player, Kate Hool. Breaking pitch, skips across the plate, blocked up by Hudnall. So a tough break for Lynchburg. Charted up to the broadcaster, Jinx. First three hitters that Doris has faced. Strong returns. And Serbaugh certainly gives a different complexion to the top of the first now. 1-1 one, one on its way. Finds the outside corner. Pitchers count now 1-2. and two. Fouled away by Hool. The battle will continue. Hool hitting 365 so far this season. Today marks her 19th start of the year. For Dorses, by the way, appeared in both games. The Tuesday doubleheader against Randolph-Macon. Got the start in game one, the 2-1 loss. And then went an inning and a third in a relief stint in game two. Lynchburg dropped game one, 2-1, then took game two, 10-8. Two's across the scoreboard. 2-2 two -two count with two down. Dorses deals in on the hands, fought off by Hool. And prior to Tuesday's appearances, Dorses got a start in game one of a doubleheader last weekend against Mary Washington, traveled through six innings, racked up four strikeouts to just one walk. Another 2-2. Two -two. High and outside, now the count is full. Fool reaches Michaela Austin. Is a hitter on deck. Line the other way. Up the right field line. We'll do it again at three and two. Roanoke has been solid on the road so far this season. A four and two record. When playing away from their home confines, meanwhile, Lynchburg, 5-5 five and five at home. Every doubleheader played on Moonfield this year for the Hornets has resulted in a split. 3-2, fought off. We'll see at least one more. The duel between Hool and Dorsis.
Another foul ball. See another 3-2 pitch. Give credit, Dorsis pounding the strike zone, trying to put away Hool and hold the damage at two across. Another 3-2 offering. Hudnall makes the throw up the first baseline, and it's just in time. Hool goes down on strikes for out number three. First punch out of the day for Kaylee Dorses, but a two-run shot from Rachel Serball opens today's scoring, and the Maroons lead 2 to nothing as we step aside and come back with the bottom of the first. Home half the first inning. Roanoke jumps out in front two to nothing. Lynchburg will send Carly Hudnall, Lexi Powell, Sophie Teller to the dish to go toe to toe with Jada Carnes, one of the best arms in the ODAC, but also across the Division Three landscape in and of itself. First pitch today for Carnes. Misses high to Hudnall. And when talking about Carnes, I really don't know where to begin. First team All Conference last season leads the ODAC in complete games with 12. That's also the same total of wins she has this year. That leads the way in the ODAC. Hudnall chops it to third, fielded by Austin, and throw to first as in time. More of the numbers for Carnes. About third in the conference in strikeout to walk ratio, a little over four. Fourth in the ODAC as well, and strikeouts per nine at 7.6. There's a lot to brag about so far this season for Carnes and overall through her career. 1.95 ERA on the season. 12 complete games, a 12 and 2 record, 86 and a third innings tossed. Next most innings pitched this year, Shannon Hester at 34 and a third. Powell leads the count, 2 and 0. Talk about the all-conference accolades last season for Roanoke. Powell, second team all ODAC last season as well. 2-0, down the heart of the plate for a called strike. Carnes a hometown product, a junior from Roanoke, Virginia. This is off the inside corner, 3-1. Most recent appearance for Carnes. Came in a start in both games of a swept doubleheader against Shenandoah. Complete games in both outings. 14 total strikeouts, no walks. Deep drive to right field, over the head of Craghead. Powell on her horse, upstanding at second. A one-out double for Lexi Powell. Has Lynchburg knocking on the door and bringing Sophie Tully to the plate representing the tying run. Give the defensive alignment for Roanoke. The catch today for Carnes is Rachel Serbaugh. The infield from right to left has Jordan DeFeva at first. Mary Bostic at second. Shannon Hester starts at short with Michaela Austin. Starting the first out, the 5-3 put out to retire Hudnall over at third. In the outfield from left to right, has Lauren Chapel left, Morgan Clark in center, and Caitlin Craghead in right. Unable to make the most recent play. The double for Powell. 
good for her first on the season. So an RBI opportunity for Sophie Tully. And this is the battle to watch. Best on best for these two respective teams. Lynchburg picked to finish second in the ODAC preseason poll. Roanoke right behind him at third. Elevated offering from Carnes. Tully can't help but try to climb the ladder. Comes up empty. And they count now one and two. Numbers this year for Tully. How about a 420 average? 23 RBIs, three home runs. Slugging percentage at 728. In between swing, they'll say Tully went around. And the first baseman for Lynchburg becomes the first strikeout victim at the hands of Jada Carnes. Powell's still on at second. The RBI opportunity falls to Carly Cundiff. First pitch swinging, check swing. Sent out to second. Bostic there to make the grab for out number three. Lexi Powell's two, uh, one out double squandered, and Lynchburg held scoreless, made it through the first inning, and Roanoke jumps out in front and leads 2 nothing in the early goings. Welcome back to Moonfield, top of the second inning. First pitch, Kaylee Dorses gets a ground ball sent back up the middle, and Ashley Haley cannot field it cleanly. Haley will be charged the error, and Michaela Austin, the leadoff hitter this frame for Roanoke, is on at first. Roanoke got two across in the first inning at the plate. Two-run shot from the catcher, Rachel Serbaugh, is what opened the scoring. Showing bunt, sending it back towards the circle. Picked up by Cundiff, the third baseman. The throw to first is in time to retire Craghead for out number one. But the bunt does move Austin up to second. 5-4 put out for those keeping track at home. Runner on in scoring position with one away. Left fielder Lauren Chappell hitting from the left side. And takes the first offering for a called strike. Chapel's been swinging it well this year. 324 average for the Maroons. This is a high octane Roanoke offense, but Lynchburg. Their pitching staff has been one of the best for the ODAC as well. 3.6 team GPA. One of the biggest areas of strength is the walks per seven. 1.68. This is a Lynchburg team that just does not give up free passes. Called strike to Craghead, or excuse me, Chapel. Count even at two and two. Dorses into the windup. 
Gets a line drive foul up the third baseline. Do it again at two and two. Dorsus elevates. Chapel lays off. Now we'll have a full count. After Chapel, it'll be the center fielder Morgan Clark. Dorsus deals. Misses the bat of Chapel. And Dorsus has her second strikeout in the afternoon and a huge out number two to the top of the second. This could serve as a huge opportunity to swing some momentum to Lynchburg's side if Dorsus can put a zero up on the board. First pitch in for a strike to Clark. Leadoff runner. And leadoff bat, I should say. Mikhail Austin reaches via the E4, and it feels like the Maroons have a chance to tack on to their two-run lead. But Dorsus, after getting out number one through the sack bunt, Coming from Craghead, was able to set down Chapel. Now it'll take a base knock for Roanoke to make it runs across and back-to-back -back innings. Pitchers count one and two. Dorses misses high and away to even the count at two all. Two balls, two strikes, lofted over the head of those in the Lynchburg dugout up the third base line. Clark may be in the ninth spot today, but hitting 370 this year, 14th start of the season today. Just four RBIs, chance to add one more here. Instead, Clark watches one on the outside corner. It's back-to-back -back punch outs for Kaylee Dorses. That completes her first time through the lineup card and... It holds Roanoke scoreless in the top of the second, keeping it a 2-0 ball game as we step aside and come back with the home half the second inning. Bottom of the second inning, Anna Grace Terrell, Jordan Brown, and Kaylee Hackett come to the plate for Lynchburg for the first time today. Terrell leads the way for Lynchburg with a 481 average, just named ODAC Athlete of the Week for softball. A smaller frame, 4 foot 11. Terrell with a small strike zone, jumps out in front of the count, 1 0. Garns bounces back, misses inside. Count grows to two balls and no strikes. Carnes did surrender to the double to Lexi Powell, made it all the way out to the right field wall, but traversed through her first inning without allowing a run. Carnes delivers a strike to make it two balls and one strike to Terrell. Two one pitch, downstairs, hitters count three and one. Carnes with 94 punch outs this season of just 23 walks. 
danger of surrendering her 24th base on balls here. Terrell watches it on the outside corner, thought she had ball four. Instead, it's strike two. Payoff pitch on its way. Line to left center field. Back goes Chapel. She won't get to it. Terrell showcases the pop and is upstanding at second. Second double today for Lynchburg already. Second double the season for Terrell. Now the designated player for Lynchburg on at second with plenty of speed. RBI opportunity for Jordan Brown. The left fielder watches the first pitch down and away. Brown holds a 295 average this year. One home run, 10 RBIs. 1-0, sliced the other way. Couple steps in, Craghead will make the catch for round number one. Kaylee Hackett, next up for Lynchburg. Not your ordinary seven spot hitter. Brought Hackett tied for seventh in the conference in RBIs, top eight in the league in stolen bases as well. Hackett, with a little bit of everything for Coach Simmons up the third base line and this Lynchburg team. First pitch swinging, Hackett fouls it away. Talking more about Coach Simmons up the third base line, up and over 650 career wins now. Tallied that 650th win in game one of a doubleheader against EMU. She became the first coach in ODAC history to hit that milestone in the 33rd Division III history to hit that achievement. Focus for Coach Simmons. Trying to pick up win number four and maybe even five with a sweep against ranked opponents over the last week. Or I should say week and a half. Virginia Wesleyan sweep against the Marlins. A little more than seven days back. <laughs> On the ground, left side and through left field. Hard time for Chapel. Picking it up, throw, cut off, and Anna Grace Terrell touches home plate in the Hornets. Strike for the first time this afternoon to make it two to one. Wait to see the official scoring. I believe it's gonna be a hit and then an error. That does appear to be the case. Single for Hackett followed by an E7 that brings Terrell home and allows Lynchburg center fielder to put the Hornets in the scoring column. Hackett <laughs> stayed at first on the play, however. And a step in the right-handed batter's box is Ruby Stewart, shortstop, takes the first pitch high. I was sitting there first. One-zero. Perfectly put on the outside corner to make it one and one. Carnes, same pitch, same spot, same result. While Hack was at the plate, we noted the nine stolen bases this year. Good for eight in the ODAC. Hackett takes off, pitch misses high, throw to second. Short hops to shortstop, Hester. Backing up the play, Bostic. Prevents Hackett from moving up any further, but Stolen base number 10 for Kaylee Hackett. Lynchburg now with a chance to tie it up. Two, two. This is high. After Stewart, the second baseman, Ashley Haley. And if Haley comes to plate, that represents the first full time to the lineup card for Jada Carnes. Payoff pitch. This is in the same spot. First walk issue today by Jada Carnes. And now two runners on for Lynchburg. 
to just see what the Hornets will do here. There is an out in this inning. Haley hits 231 so far this season. Haley also tied for a Lynchburg most seven sacrifice bunts. See, this is another spot here. We turn the lineup card over. Carly Hudnall coming to play with an RBI spot, but with two down. <laughs> See what the strategy is for Coach Simmons. Haley takes the first pitch. It's in for a strike. Did not show bunt. Looks like the Hornets' second baseman will be swinging away. Speed from Carnes. This is low. Well, and as evident by back to back complete games in the doubleheader against Shenandoah, Carnes can pretty much go as long as she wants in a game, but that last pitch, 30th on the afternoon. The foul ball makes it one and two. Jada Carnes or a Maroons fan watching, you're looking for a strikeout, potentially ground ball double play. The Maroons have turned just three double plays this year. Sky to left, ranging to the line, catch is made by Chapel. Both runners forced to hold. And that outcome serves just the same as a potential strikeout for Carnes. Roanoke looks to hold the damage at just one run across for Lynchburg. The Hornets are going to make it a multi-run inning and potentially tie this one up. First pitch to Hudnall, her second at bat in as many innings. Starts with a cold strike on the outside corner. The wind has been swirling in the early goings, now blowing out towards left center field. Carnes deals, misses outside. Count even at one. Hudnall low for one, grinding out to third her first time up. Slap back to the circle. Off the body of Carnes. Runners advance one base. Hackett, lead runner now up to third with Stewart behind her at second and infield single for Hudnall. Loots the bases. Fourth hit of the game for Lynchburg. Lexi Powell had a big double. Had the Hornets knocking on the door to get in the scoring column last inning. Extra base here would do wonders for Lynchburg. First run of this inning. Came across due to an E7. After a single from Kaylee Hackett. Close miss for Carnes. Count now at one and one. The double for Powell, her first on the year. And it's been a slower start offensively, just hitting 162 this season after being in the second team all ODAC squad last year. The one, two, driven to center. Ranging back, Clark on the warning track there to make the grab for out number three. Allowed final out to the second inning of softball. And the bases are left loaded for Lynchburg, but the Hornets do cut the deficit in half, thanks in part to a fielding mishap from the Maroons. It's now a two, one score as we head to the top of the third.
On to the third inning of softball. Roanoke leads Lynchburg two to one. Both runs for the Maroons come across in the first. Lynchburg gets in the scoring column in the bottom of the second. First pitch swinging, popped up. Shallow right field, Powell charges in and retires Mary Bostic for the first out to the third. Bostic now 0 for 2 with the pair of flyouts. We go back to last inning for Dorsis. Really, there's been one mistake pitch today and it resulted in a two-run home run for Rachel Serbaugh, but for the most part, Dorsis has been stellar today. For Lynchburg, Whitey goes off speed. This is downstairs to Deveva, picked up an infield single her last time up. But even after the home run from Serba, it was a strikeout for Dorses to end the first inning. Leadoff runner in the second reaches, due in part to the 47th error of the season for Lynchburg. But then after the error, you had the sack bunt and then back-to-back -back strikeouts for Dorses to get out of the jam. A strong start to the top of the third with a fly out to right. Dorses to the plate. It's a foul ball sent back to the screen. Now it's a pitcher's count, one and two. All I have to say, Dorse has been very impressive so far this afternoon. If the freshman can keep it up, continue to battle with maybe the best pitcher inside the conference and one of the best across the Division Three landscape and Jada Carnes, that's certainly a pat on the back. What Dorse is now, but what she'll continue to grow into for the Hornets. Fava in the two spots today, despite hitting just 225 this season. Does have four doubles. Another one, two. Lined up the middle. And Fava now two for two. This base knock for Maroon's first baseman. Collins with a little bit more bite behind it. One on one down for Shannon Hester, the shortstop. Always dangerous when at the plate. Leads the ODAC with a batting average at 469 for today's game. Got underway. 21 starts, 22 games played for the shortstop. And Hester watches the first pitch low. Golfed out to left. Back to the wall. Brown won't get to it. Second two run home run of the game. This one, courtesy of Shannon Hester. And Roto jumps out in front, four to one. Long ball causing headaches for the freshman Keeley Dorsis. Base pass now cleared and one away. We'll have to take on Serbaugh, who gave us the first two-run shot of the afternoon back in the first inning. Dorsus looking to bounce back. The long ball struggles this year for the freshman. Haven't necessarily been all that evident. The two today, she's tied with Charlton for the most on the team. Charlton, though, almost 78 innings toss versus Dorsus, right around 57 now this season. Called strike, even the count to Serba. All Udak's second team selection last year. Serba made that squad as the catcher. Joined by Rebecca Hensley and Michaela Austin as an outfielder and at-large third baseman. Line the other way off the glove of Tully. Haley finishes the play. You were every day 3-4-3 three, three, ground out. He comes out number two. Keith Hool. Renault's designated player, 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Yeah. 
First pitch of the A.B. is a called strike. Flash line for Houle, 365 average, 443 on base percentage, 673 slugging percentage. Those numbers will go up as Houle aboard at first. Prolonging the top of the third just a little longer and bringing Michaela Austin back to the plate. Single to left, the fifth hit of the day for Roanoke. The high pitch in for a strike. Austin was lead off bat last inning, reached on the E4. Ultimately stranded at second base last inning. Dorses misses up and in. Close miss, but a missed on the list to make it two and one. Went the home runs today. Lynchburg has now given up 60 extra base hits this season. 35 doubles, six triples, 19 home runs. And now some of those numbers are inflated with double headers against like number two Salisbury, number four CNU. And sometimes taking on national competition like that will skew numbers against you. Just like if you play you subpar competition to put it lightly. You can inflate your numbers in a positive way. And Coach Simmons has been open and honest about wanting to play a tough schedule, especially with a younger team, no true seniors for the Hornets this year. And a tough competition seemingly paid off, right? We're talking about Lynchburg with three wins against ranked opponents over this stretch. That's seen Lynchburg win four of their last six. Sweep against Virginia Wesleyan, split with Randolph Macon on Tuesday. And helps that its conference opponents and conference games always find a way to keep themselves close, but part of the reason Lynchburg can say they can win those close games, like both wins against Virginia Wesleyan, one run contest. Certainly had to think experiences against Salisbury and CNU ultimately help put the Hornets on track. They maybe help just a little bit. A one run game, that's all the difference. After Austin draws the walk, this one's fouled away by Craghead. The walk by Dorsis, the first that she's offered up this afternoon. So two on with two away and a one-two count. To the Roanoke right fielder who laid down a sacrifice last inning. So without an official A-B, one-two, line foul again. Craghead hitting 267 so far this year. Eight hits through 30 at bats. Today marks her 17th start of the season. Grounder to short. Fielding as Stewart. The toss to second just in time to retire Austin for out number three. Fielder's choice makes it so. Just one runner left on and two more runs. Tacked on by Roanoke. A two-run shot from Shannon Hester. Makes it a 4-1 game as we head to the home half of the third.
4-1 your score, bottom of the third inning. Many things off for Lynchburg. Sophie Tully pops it up. Right behind first base, it's in foul territory. Bermuda Triangle of sorts with Craghead giving chase from right. Bostick trying to range over for him second. And DeFeta having a hard time finding it as Roanoke first baseman. Watches it land in the grass. It's an 0-1 count to start for Tully, who will be followed up by Carly Condup and Anna Grace Terrell. Tully went down on strikes. Her first AB was a check swing. Her home plate umpire said Tully went around on. Line to center and down for a base knock. Tully picks up her first hit on the afternoon. Lynchburg, this feels like a big inning to try to get a response after the two-run home run from Shannon Hester. The top of third makes it a three-run lead for the Maroons, large lead for either side. In game one of our doubleheader, be about a 30-ish minute intermission between the first and second game of our twin bill. Hope to have you stick with us for that second game. Carly Cundiff. Come to the plate, but first, we'll have a courtesy runner at first for Tully. This is Skylar Sams with the honors. Coming up in the box, 0 for 1. Popped out to second, her first AB. Popped up. And again, to second, Bostic makes a grab. Kind of down for out number one. Tough start to the day for Cundiff. One on, one down for Anna Grace Terrell. Had a double, then came around to score. Last inning. Lynchburg currently tied for second in the ODAC standings, six and two conference record. Even with Randolph Macon, sent to second. Catch is made by Bostic, throw to first, not in time to double off Sands. Finish the conference talk. Lynchburg and Randolph Macon tied for second, trailing just Bridgewater, seven to one. The lone loss in conference play for the Eagles was against Lynchburg. And further down in the standings, Roanoke currently sixth. Pick to finish third in the preseason poll. But Roanoke 3-3 three three in conference play, right in the middle of the pack as it stands right now. Today, strong start in game one, can carry the momentum throughout the rest of this contest. And then, in, then into game two, perhaps sweep Lynchburg. That's where you get that leaping point moving forward. Carry that momentum down to the end of the season in the postseason play. Jordan Brown, the Lynchburg left fielder, 0 for 1 so far. Pull out to left. Last inning. Beg your pardon. Pull out to right field. Last inning. 0 2 pitch on the ground. Backhanded by Austin. A throw across the infield is in time to retire Brown for the final out. To the third inning of action. A leadoff single from Sophie Tully. Becomes null and void as her courtesy runner, Skylar Sams, is stranded at first. We've made it through three, four, one, your score as we step aside and come back to the top of the fourth inning for Moon Field.
Top of the fourth inning, Roanoke with a chance to extend their 4-1 lead. Send Lauren Chapel the plate to lead things off, who will be followed up by Morgan Clark. Then the top of the order with Mary Bostic scheduled to hit third this inning. Kayla Dorsa stays out in the circle for Lynchburg. Misses with the first pitch she tosses in the fourth. Chapel 0 for 1, struck out her first A.B. It's a pair of two-run home runs that have accounted for the four runs for the Maroons. It's a serve ball with the long ball in the first. Two-run blast from Shannon Hester last inning. Dorses to the plate. It's a liner into the Lynchburg dugout. Everyone is okay. Always a good sign. First of two games we'll have for you this afternoon. Lynchburg has split every home doubleheader before today's action got underway. Cundiff with a nice play at third. Retires Chapel for the first out of the fourth inning. Finish that point about the doubleheader talk. That includes early season doubleheaders against William Peace, Methodist, and Averitt. Then more recently, splits with Bridgewater and Mary Washington. Bunt laid down foul off the bat of Clark. Center fielder using the slap approach and takes this one at the knees. Pitcher's pitch makes it 0-2. Chance for the fourth strikeout today for Dorsis. Close miss for the righty. Clark 0 for 1 went down looking. Her first time up. One, two, hit softly. Cundiff, a couple steps back, but ultimately it's Stewart at short making the grab for the second out. Lineup card turns over for a second time. Mary Bostic been active in the field, but at the plate over two with a pair of flyouts. First pitch. Starts to count at 0-1. Here we go, bud. Right side of the infield, and Bostic will be on at first. Tough break for Dorsus and the Hornets at the lock-in and try to Find the third and final out against Jordan DeFeva, who is two for two today. Soft error caught an infield single back in the first, then a rocket up the middle in the third. DeFeva watched the first pitch in first strike. They're going to call it a single for Bostic, who stands at first. Hit the sixth of the day for the Maroons. Runner in motion, letter high pitch. Popped out of play. Bostic retreats to first. DeFeva. Down on the count. At this point in the game, Dorses turned 68 pitches. Able to make it through three and two thirds, four earned runs, two strikeouts to one walk. Rolled up the middle, Haley at second, won't make the toss to Stewart, instead tries to step on the bag and is beaten there by Bostic. Another infield single for Roanoke. After retiring the first two hitters this inning, Dorsis running into trouble. There are two dunks on the pond and Shannon Hester returning to the plate. Trip just behind the rubber. Lynchburg infield. Off 
both those balls in play from Bostic and DeFeva. Ruled singles, there was some complications in the mix there for the Hornets, specifically on the most recent play. With Haley's feeling confident, making that toss to Stewart. I think that play could be made in time for the final out. Instead, Roanoke able to keep the inning alive. And before Hester can step into the box, now Coach Simmons takes a trip to the circle on another meeting. On the bump. And this looks like it'll make for the end of the day for Kaylee Dorsis. We will step aside and come back and tell you about the pitcher taking over in the circle for Lynchburg. Hornets currently trail the Maroons 4-1. to one. Throwing Oak, knocking the door for more. Bree Carter comes out of the bullpen for Lynchburg. First pitch of the day for Carter. Misses down and outside to Shannon Hester. Shortstop one for two. Last time up had the two-run home run. To make it a four-run contest, four-one contest. Or not great diction on that. Three-run game. It's Carter just misses off the outside corner. Hitters count 2-0. and oh. Why not final for Dorses? She's responsible for both runners on the base pass. As it stands right now, freshman Went through three and two thirds, gave up six hits. Currently, four earned runs against Dorsus' line. For the live stats, one walk, two strikeouts this afternoon. A leaf appearance for Carter marks her 10th stint this year for Lynchburg. Called strike. Most recent appearance for Carter. Came in game two against Randolph Macon. Came out of the bullpen, went through three and two thirds. Did surrender three earned runs. Carter gets a grounder on the right side. Haley fields and fires to first. And the two runners, Bruno got on with two away, are stranded on the base pass. And a much needed zero. Put next to the Maroons line in the top of the fourth. We will step aside and come back with the home half of the frame. Lynchburg trails Roanoke four to one.
Bottom of the fourth inning, Lynchburg down by three runs at the hands of the number 10 team in the country, the Roanoke Maroons. Hornets send Kaylee Hackett, Ruby Stewart, and Ashley Haley to the plate. Carnes, first pitch of the inning, sent the other way and into right field. Kaylee Hackett continues to swing a great bat for Lynchburg and the center fielder. Now two for two today. Hackett was in motion her first time on the base pass. Picked up her 10th swipe bag of the season. See if we see Kaylee Hackett back in motion as Ruby Stewart will step to the plate without an official at bat today. Drew a walk, her first plate appearance. First pitch, in and out of the glove and serve ball, but it is a called strike. Carnes to this point in the contest just threw her 51st pitch. Been able to travel through three innings. Just one strikeout and one walk for Carnes. Lynchburg's done a really good job putting the ball in play, forcing Roanoke's defense to make plays. Good things tend to happen, and that's part of why you see Lynchburg six hits. That's just as many as Roanoke has at this point in the contest. It just so happens two of those six hits left the yard for the Maroons, which certainly goes a long way. But Lynchburg has been swinging it well. Now it just comes down to, hey, you may not have the home runs that Roanoke has, but that means when you get runners on, you got to be clinical. Sack bunts certainly in play, especially as we go on and on in this contest. Be able to move runners up becomes more important. But also when there's runners on in scoring position, gotta come through. It's two two count to Stewart now. And to finish that point, I have about five runners left on so far for Lynchburg. Just one run across. That's gonna have to be a number that evens out in the back half of this game. Two two, misses Lowen in. Count now full. <laughs> Payoff pitch. Cut on and missed. Strikeout number two on the day for Jada Karn. She averages 7.6 Ks per seven. Strikeout number's down a little bit, but the junior has only allowed the one run. Now we'll see Ashley Haley at the plate for a second time. Bye. Haley shows bunt, pulls back, and takes the first offering. Lowing in. Especially with Haley showing bunt. Would not surprise me if Hackett is in motion, just because the bunt will clutter the vision of Sirbaugh behind the plate. Bye. Fouled away by Haley. Count to one and one. Talking about the stolen base numbers for Hackett. Not only that she has 10 swipe backs this year, she's 10 for 10. She's been very wise in the moment she's chosen to run. 1-1, one, one, the bunt down, third base side. Throw to first. In time, it looks like it pulled Bostic off the bag, but then Bostic was able to apply a tag just before Haley touched first base. The sack bun does move. Hackett into scoring position. 5-4 put out. Results in the second out of the inning. Lineup card turns over. It's Carly Hudnall looking to come through in the RBI spot. Hudnall had two on with two down the last time she came to the plate. Infield single. Moved the other runners up. Had Hudnall on at first. And Lexi Powell had a deep drive to center, but it stayed in the yard. Powell, the bases left loaded in front of her, including Hudnall, who made it to first. But again, just another example of Lynchburg. Already down by three. The room for error is diminishing as this game progresses. Even with two away in the inning, chance to come through with a runner on in scoring position. You want to call it dire, but it's important to say the least. Carnes, this is well high. Out now, two balls and a strike for the Lynchburg catcher. This pitch low and away. Count grows three balls and a strike. First base open. Oh, that's a tough out. This is a. Uh, Hard hole to dig yourself out of if you're Carnes. Powell has made loud contact two times today, one for two on deck. 
3-1. Sent to short and snagged by Shannon Hester. Have a day, Shannon Hester, a two-run home run and an inning ending line drive snared by Hester for out number three. Hackett left straighted at second and Lynchburg held scores for the second consecutive inning. Keep it 4-1 game as we head to the top of the fifth. Bree Carter in the circle, looking to get through her first full inning of work as we have made it to the top of the fifth inning. Carter got the final out to the fourth. A retiring Shannon Hester just saw him make tremendous defensive play to end the bottom of the fourth inning. The line drive off the bat of Carly Hudnall. Looked like it was going to clear the head of Hester, but long arms, outstretched glove. Short South was there to make the grab. Here, leading things off from top of the fifth, Rachel Serbaugh. Now one for three. She lines out to right. Next up is Kate Houle. Struck out her first AB, then picked up a single in the third. Score word over Moonfield reads four runs on six hits with one error for Roanoke. One run, six hits, one error for Lynchburg. All four runs for the Maroons. Come on, a pair of home runs from Serbo and Hester. Meanwhile, the lone run for Lynchburg was in the bottom of the second due to an E7. Just to catch you up in case you might have missed any of the action so far. Carter misses off the outside corner. Hitters count, 2-0 to Hool. Come on, 2-3! Letter high. Hool underneath it. It's going to stay in the infield. Haley, after initially backing up, charges in and holds on for out number two. So Carter has faced three so far. Retired Hester, Serbon, and Hool. Strong opening to the relief appearance for Carter going through the heart of the Roanoke order. Now looking to complete a perfect top of the fifth. Michaela Austin sends the fly ball to right. Powell makes the grab, four. Out number three, and that does, in, does indeed complete a perfect inning toss by Bree Carter. We'll step aside and come back with the bottom of the fifth. 4-1 your score from Lynchburg, Virginia.
the first time today, Roanoke held scoreless in back-to-back -back innings. Pressure on for Jada Carnes, looking to maintain a 4-1 Bruins lead over the Hornets. Roanoke, the number 10 team in the country. Today marks the 67th and 68th all-time meeting between these two squads. Roanoke holds the edge, 35-31 and 31 against the Hornets. Roanoke even with a winning record here at Moonfield, 13-12, and 12, and playing in Lynchburg. 2-0 count to start the leadoff hitter, Lexi Powell. Carnes fires a strike, makes it two balls on the strike. Tully, one for two at a double, driven the other way in the first. Deep fly out to center, then in the second. Carnes misses just below the knees. Count swells to three and one. After Powell will be Sophie Tully, then Carly Cuniff, and he reach. We'll see Anna Grace Terrell return to the plate. Grounder to short. Fielded cleanly by Hester, and the throw is in time to retire Powell. Four in a row retired by Carnes, who will face Tully for a third time. Lynchburg first baseman, one for two, struck out her first time up. Singled back in the third, had a courtesy runner check in for Skylar Sams, who was ultimately stranded at first. At least one runner stranded in every inning for Lynchburg. Tully shoots it back up the middle, ranging to her right, Bostic. Able to field and fire to retire Tully for out number two. They get five in a row set down by Jada Carnes. You know, double down on that point we talked about Lynchburg with a runner left on in every inning. Hornets also have a hit in every inning, which is really impressive against a pitcher of Karn's caliber. Comes down to seeing those hits turn into runs. Ultimately the goal of every team. That's really been the difference today. Home runs guaranteed to cash in as opposed to hits. Got to pile them together. We'll have a pinch hitter for Lynchburg, Gracie Dooley, coming to the plate in the place of Cundiff. Probably just a pinch hit spot. Dooley sends it to third. Picked up by Austin. Nice play made by the Roanoke third baseman. The throw to first was in time. And off three ground balls, Carnes tosses a perfect bottom of the fifth to match Carter's efforts in the top half of this inning. On to the top of the sixth inning, Roanoke leads Lynchburg 4-1. Top of the sixth inning. We've been completely scoreless for the last two frames of softball. Just barely keeping it fair. Keatlin Craghead has her first hit of the day. And folks, we have a great view of it up the right field line. It doesn't get much closer than that. Bloop single. Becomes the seventh hit of the day for Roanoke. Maroons had the leadoff runner on to start the sixth inning. Lauren Chappell, the next to the plate, the left fielder 0 for 2. After Chappell comes Morgan Clark, the center fielder also 0 for 2. Then we'll see at the top of the lineup bar. A double play turned by Lynchburg. That being said, the Hornets are first in the ODAC. Double plays turned this year with 10. Quick meeting between 
Roanoke's head coach Mike Mitchell. Next scheduled hitter, Chapel. And instead, it looks like we have a pinch hitter. Seven to plate for the Maroons. First pitch from Carter in for a strike. Don't have a great look at the number, but I believe it's Katie Collier, sophomore from California at the plate. Lying this one up and over the head of Haley at second. Powell tries to make a play at second. The throw not in time. Now I have a number. Apologies for the delay. It was Madison Courts, freshman, second baseman from North Carolina. Picks up a hit in the place of Lauren Chapel. Two runners on, no outs. And it looks like we'll have yet another pinch hitter instead of Morgan Clark. This will be Adriana Rivera, another freshman bat coming to the plate, hailing from Virginia Beach, Virginia. As Coach Mitchell dives into his bench, and pays dividends for Madison Courts. Now on at first, behind Craig at its second. Rivera this season, hitting just 188. Today marks her 18th game played, has made eight starts as well. Carter misses on the first pitch she tosses to Rivera. So after Carter retires the first four she faces, she starts the sixth, giving up a pair of singles to Craghead and Quartz. Neither overly hard hit, which is always a tough thing as a pitcher. How do you try to digest that type of play? You executed, you got something soft, you just found the soft spot in your defense. And now you're having to work and operate with runners on. Especially in this type of setting. Lynchburg already down by three runs. The room for error for Carter, especially in her mind. It's got to be narrow. So we'll see how the righty handles this situation. Carter, a sophomore from Blue Ridge, Virginia. Pitchers count. This is high and away. Throw up the first baseline, not in time to catch courts. A strikeout would do wonders for Carter. Because after Rivera is the top of the lineup with Bostic in the on-deck circle. In on the hands. Haley catches the flare. Rivera down for the first out. Craghead and Quartz, of course, have to hold. Mary Bostic. The chance to get Roanoke back in the scoring column for the first time since the top of the third. Carter fires a strike, knee high. Strong start to this AB. Bostic, one for three. The hit came for last time up. The sink coming in the fourth. In and out of the glove of Hudnall. Costly wild pitch. Takes away the double play, but also moves Caitlin Craig at the third. And Madison Quartz up to second. Now a hit from Bostic. Certainly scores one and may well score two. One one, high and away. And first base is open, but facing the top of the lineup, you're not trying to avoid anybody to get someone else, especially the on deck hitter beating Jordan DeFeva. First baseman three for three with three singles. And two hitters later, shortstop Shannon Hesker. And we've seen the damage she can do with the plate. So the focus for Carter has to be on handling business against Boston. Something soft or a strikeout. Infield, playing in for Lynchburg. So other side of the coin, Bostic, if he gets something hearted on the ground, not a whole lot of reaction time for the Hornets infield. Might be able to sneak it through and pick up a couple of RBIs for your efforts.
Carter winds, fires the 2-2. Lofted into the stands, first base side, a catch made by fan in attendance. I don't know this for sure. Nobody take me for my word on this, but I actually heard that there's a independent league baseball team where if a catch is made in the stands, it counts as an out. That's the case. I had to find tickets. Fly ball, right field. Powell, range again, makes the catch. Delivers a nice throw. Slightly up the third base line, but Powell wards off Craighead's potential idea of trying to tag and score on the play. Bostic now one for four today, and Carter gets a big second out. Still no damage done yet for the Roanoke offense at the top of the sixth. Carter versus DeFeva. First pitch on the outside corner for a strike. DeFeva has reached all three times. Singles in the first, third, and fourth. O one 1 misses above the letters. Talking about DeFeva and what this could do moving forward for Roanoke. You're talking about a 2 0 hitter who's hitting below 300, which not always a bad thing. 225 average, though, compared to the rest of this Roanoke offense. Certainly subpar. But great day so far for DeFeva. And if she gets that bat going, sandwiched between Bostic and Hester. Serbo on the cleanup spot. Roanoke offense is already really good. It might be getting even better if DeFeva starts heating up. Hits softly back to the circle. Carter, mission accomplished. DeFeva retired for the first time today with the 1-3 put out. Two runners left on and left on in scoring position, and the Maroons held scores for a third consecutive inning. Lynchburg keeping it interesting. 4-1 your scores. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Anna Grace Terrell, Jordan Brown, Kaylee Hackett scheduled to come to the plate as Lynchburg trails by three runs. Jada Carnes surrendered that run back in the home half of the second. Anna Grace Terrell ahead in the count, 2 0. Designated player had a double in the second inning. Loud contact with a line out in the third. Hitters count, Carnes responds. Finds his own. Carnes has retired six in a row after surrendering a leadoff single to Hackett. Back to start the fourth. Off the end of the bat and slicing foul. Down now two and two. Carnes trying to attack the outside corner, a narrow miss, but count now at three and two. Oh. 
Payoff pitch to Terrell. Chop foul, first base side. We'll do it again at three and two. Lynchburg will need to come back to make it wins in five of their last seven. Coming off a split doubleheader against number six Randolph Macon earlier this week. Letter high, hit to the screen. Meanwhile, Roanoke, last time out, swept Shenandoah. In the fourth in, also had a split doubleheader against Randolph Macon. With the Maroons taking game two of that twin bill. It's three consecutive wins for the Maroons. Chance to make it four in a row and potentially five with the sweep of Lynchburg this afternoon. Battle continues between Terrell and Carnes. Hers averaging up and over seven and a half strikeouts per seven innings, but with just two so far this afternoon. Another 3 2. Terrell sends it on a hop to first. DeFava scoops it up and takes it to the bag herself. Retire Terrell for out number one. Lynchburg now down to their final five outs. Jordan Brown. 0 for 2 with a fly out and a ground out. Mentioned it earlier, but we'll have about 30 minutes between game one and two of our doubleheader. Hope to have you stick around for the second game of our doubleheader. Game one has not disappointed. Have a hard time thinking game two would. Brown takes this one down below the knees. Hitters count 2 0. Game two figures to see Emily Charlton for Lynchburg. Meanwhile, Jada Carnes coming off, starting both games of a doubleheader against Shenandoah with the full seven in each. We may well see more of Carnes this afternoon. Otherwise, maybe it's Shannon Hester, second most innings tossed this year for anybody for Roanoke. That's it. 34 and a third inning so far. Carnes has cleared 90, including the innings pitched here in game one. Brown climbs the ladder, pops it up, foul territory. And a collection of Maroons give chase in the all. Take a bit of a tumble. All three slow to get up. It was Crackfield charging in from right. Bostic trying to make the play from second. But DePave being the last to get up. Roanoke first baseman. Now on her feet. It's the softball back to her pitcher, Carnes. I think part of the reason for the slower rise is one thing to land on grass, but the gravel up the third and first base line can be a little less forgiving. But all three players back on the diamond. It's 2-2 two -two count to Jordan Brown. Carnes looking for her third strikeout. Instead, gets a fly ball to center. Ranging to her right, Clark is there to make the grab. Make it eight consecutive for a tire by Jada Carnes. The last to reach is Kaylee Hackett, who steps to the plate now. Hackett's gone two for two. Singles in the second and the fourth. We're gonna keep the trend alive in the bottom of the sixth. Pitch misses low and inside, and they'll say grazed by the foot of Hackett. So the streak ends at eight in a row, retired by Carnes, and once again, Hackett reaches successfully. One on, two down for Ruby Stewart. Stewart at least scheduled to be the next bat. Coach Simmons out of the dugout. This might signal a pinch hitter for Lynchburg, and it will indeed. Sarah English, freshman from Powhatan, Virginia, get her first A-B of the afternoon. English this season, hitting 154. Today marks her 20th game played. She's two for 13. 
all told. In between swing, it's a called strike against English. Carnes powers the 0-1 past English to make it nothing and two. Last strikeout for Carnes was back in the fourth against Ruby Stewart. English hits in that spot. Carnes pitch away from her third strikeout. The 0-2 on its way, elevated and above the letters. Meanwhile, Hackett on at first. One for one on still in base attempts today. Ten for ten on the season. One, two, off the outside corner. Two's across the scoreboard with a 2-2 zoo -zoo count and two away. The English were to reach. Ashley Haley is scheduled to come to the plate next, but it looks like Bree Hodges is in the on-deck circle for Lynchburg. Carnes deals. English fouls it off. Hornets have taken three consecutive meetings against Roanoke, including a sweep of the 2021 doubleheader. English, the defensive swing, fights it away. Carnes gets the signs from Serbo. Softly hit to right and down just in front of Craghead. Hackett on her horse, makes it all the way to third. Pinch hit single for Sarah English. Keeps the sixth inning alive a little longer. Runners at the corners now for the Hornets with Bree Hodges. Come to the plate representing the tying run. We'll double, sure to, double check to make sure Number lines up. But Hackett, the runner at third, English aboard at first. This is indeed Bree Hodges. Hodges has made 11 starts this season. This will become 23rd game played. Hodges hitting 200 this year before she fully can step in the box. Coach Mitchell out to the circle to discuss the approach for Carnes against Hodges. There has been an arm up and throwing for Roanoke in the bullpen since the start of the bottom of the six. That arm has now left the pen. A sign that a change could be on the horizon of Carnes. Possibly surrenders a run, but doesn't relinquish the lead. But you have to think, Jada Carnes ideally has the softball in her hand the rest of the way for Roanoke and in specific for Coach Mitchell. Player of Carnes' caliber, you just don't want to have the game taken away from her, so to speak. The 1 0 to Hodges. Hit hard the other way, but foul. Just does have a pair of home runs this season. Eight RBIs to go with it. Really here, while a home run does tie the game up, the focus for Hodges has to be simple. Put the ball in play. Pitch is down in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher, Serba. And the wild pitch makes it 4-2. Both runs for Lynchburg have come off unforced errors, really, for Rona. And Grace Terrell is able to come over come around and score after a single from Hackett, but it was an E7 on the play. That opened the door for Terrell to score, and now a wild pitch. 
gives the Hornets their second run of the day. Carnes finds the outside corner. The count even at two and two. English also advances on the play. Now stands in scoring position. 2-2 two -two to Hodges. Hit to the screen. But that wild pitch, it's the first earned run surrendered by Carnes today. Another 2-2. Two -two. Off speed, misses low. This time, Zerba blocks it up. English forced to hold it second. First base is open, but after Hodges comes to the top of the lineup. Payoff pitch on its way and cut on and missed. Hodges becomes the third strikeout of the day for Jada Carnes. Sarah English left stranded at second, but Lynchburg does cut into the deficit slightly. Keely Hackett scores on the wild pitch to make it a 4-2 game as we step aside and come back to the top of the seventh. Seventh inning is softball. Roanoke sends Shannon Hester, Rachel Serval, Kate Poole to the plate. Looking for runs of insurance. The Hornets push a run across in the bottom of the sixth to make it a 4-2 game. Appreciate everybody tuning in to game one of our doubleheader. Roanoke leads Lynchburg 4-2. It's TJ Winger here with you on the call. Carter starts the seventh, missing away to Hester, who is one for three today. The hit, a two-run shot. The top of the third, but that was the last time the Maroons Reach a scoring column. It's four runs in the first three innings of the plate, followed by three straight innings with nothing to show. That's in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. But here, potentially in the final inning of action, the first game of our doubleheader. Roanoke looking for a little bit more separation before we get to the home half of the inning. And Lynch will have the top of the lineup coming to play. Crowder to second, Haley there to make the play. So Carter got into a little bit of trouble. To start at the top of the six, gave up singles to Craghead and Madison Courts in a pinch hit spot. Neither was hit overly hard. But as Hester is grounded out to second for the second consecutive AB, should be noted Hester was the first to face Carter when Hester was retired last time up. Goes for the final out in the fourth. So now, Sir Ball, and every player for Roanoke moving forward will be facing Carter for a second time, which is certainly advantageous with those at the plate. Carter fires at the knees, evens the count at one and one. To that point, after the two singles to start the sixth, Carter bounced back in a tremendous way. And Adriana Rivera, a pinch hitter for the Maroons, pop out to second, followed by a fly out to route for Mary Bostic, and was able to retire to Fava for the first time today on a ground ball back to the circle. Hester grounds out to start the seventh, and now a one-two count to the catcher Serball. One for three as well, the two-run shot her first time up. Open today's scoring. Off-speed from Carter, low and away to even the count at two and two. 
Those two hits, by the way, from Craghead and then Quartz. The only two hits surrendered by Carter. High and away. Three and two count. Payoff pitch downstairs. First walk issued by Carter. Second on the day for a Lynchburg pitching staff that one of the best in the ODAC. In regards to walks per seven, 1.68 per game. One on, one away for Houle. Another player for Roanoke who's one for three today. There's a single for Houle coming back in third. Last time, Bree Carter had an appearance where she did not allow a run. It was in her first stint on the bump this season, four and a third against Averitt. She started that contest, gave up just two hits, had one strikeout. Lynchburg would drop that contest for it, too. Got away by Houle. That evens the count at one. Barring a double play, we'll see Michaela Austin return to the play for Roanoke. Hit hard and into center field. Kate Houle, the second hit of the game, advances Serbaugh to second. Two on with just one down, Michaela Austin, still searching for her first hit on the afternoon. 0 for 2 officially, also drawn a walk. Out in front of this pitch, hit hard but foul. Left field side. Austin, second team all ODAC a year ago, hitting 340 this season. 10 RBIs. Serval on at second. Despite being a catcher, does run well. It's what I've been able to see this afternoon. So it to the outfield could give Roanoke their first run since the third and a much needed run of insurance. Trying to create some separation against Lynchburg. Carter misses just off the outside corner. Count now one and two. Ball and two strikes. Chopped up the middle. Stewart just able to get the right foot on second base to retire Houle for out number two. Fielder's choice, six unassisted. Sir Ball advances to third and Austin aboard at first with Houle taking off the base bats. Huge spot, Caitlin Craghead versus Bree Carter. Craghead looking to supply the insurance run that Roanoke has been building up towards this inning. Carter looking to make it a fourth consecutive scoreless frame next to the Maroons line. The 0-1 misses up and in. Craghead picked up a single her last time up, made it all the way to third after another single for Madison Courts and a wild pitch on this coming last inning. Craig had then stranded at third. Sent the other way and foul towards the grandstands up the first baseline. Pitchers count one and two. Carter without a strikeout so far. This would be a great spot for her first on the day. One, two, sent to second, Haley. Catches the line drive in her direction for out number three. Two runners left on, one in scoring position, and it becomes the fourth consecutive 
scoreless inning with Roanoke at the plate. We will step aside and come back with the bottom of the seventh. Lynchburg looking to mount in a rally. Meanwhile, the Maroons looking to get through the Hornets' final three outs. Carly Hudnall, Lexi Powell, Sophie Tully scheduled to the plate for the Hornets down to their final three outs. Jada Carnes back in the circle, looking to close it down for Lynchburg and garner her 13th win of the season. She already leads the conference in that category. Also, assuming Carnes works for the entire seventh, it would be the 13th complete game tossed by the junior. 0-1 on the outside corner. Count now at nothing and two for Hudnall, who's one for three today. Carnes just misses. Trying to get the same call she got a moment ago. Instead, we'll see at least one more come to Hudnall. Letter high, slapped away by the Hornet catcher. Lynchburg got a run across last inning thanks to a wild pitch from Carnes that allowed Hackett to touch home plate. It was the first earned run surrendered by Carnes. Off speed, then off the body of Hudnall. They'll say she left the batter's box. It'll go down officially as a two unassisted. Lives with the scorebook back at home, but that is a backbreaker right there for Lynchburg. Now with just two outs to spare, trailing by a pair of runs. Powell swung it well so far in game one. Had a double in the first. Look at a spark. The late game rally for Lynchburg. Carnes misses down and in. It's good to see Powell swinging it well. 162 average before today's double header. Just like we talked about for Roanoke's two hole hitter, Jordan DeFeva. Those bats start to warm up. Both these offenses become really, really dangerous. Here, Powell, the shallow shot to right field. Bostic back to make the grab for the second out. Sophie Tully, one for three today. Looking to keep the Hornets' hopes alive in game one. Carnes misses, high and outside. Brady's throwing 106 pitches in this game. It really will be interesting to see if she gets to start in game two. Bounce back pitch down the heart of the play. Count even at one and one. Belt high, cut on and missed. Lynchburg down to their final strike. 
One, two to Tully, down below the knees. Two, two, line foul. Carnes bumped up the velo there, unable to blow it past Tully. Last time up for the Hornet first base teams, a ground down to second. Middle out of a perfect bottom of the fifth thrown by Carnes. Carnes with a chance to do something similar here in the bottom of the seventh. Another 2-2, two -two, down in the dirt. Now a full count for Tully. When Tully reaches on deck is Carly Cundiff. Lined up the first baseline and foul. Tully continues to work against Carnes. Payoff pitch again. Fouled off by Tully. Focus for Lynchburg just has to be get Tully on and work one base at a time. But you got to start with step one. Can Tully reach another 3 2? And once again, fouled away. Focus for Carnes has been consistent this AB. Off speed, something soft and downstairs or dack that outside corner. Tully has focused on trying to drive pitches the other way. As her focus coming into this season. And here it pays off. Tully may not got a base knock on some of those pitches in the outer half, but because she fights him off, works a long battle, she draws the walk and is on at first. Second walk issued by Carnes. We'll have a courtesy runner at first for Tully. Taking over at first is Leah Caldwell. Don't think we'll see Caldwell be put into motion. Certainly has the speed to take off. It's three for three on stone base attempts this season, but you would just hate to have your final out of a game come by you running into it. Cundiff was pinch hit for last time up, so third baseman. 0 for 2 with two pop outs to second. First pitch is low. Quick meeting in the infield. Catcher Rachel Serbaugh. Just a chat with Carnes. The infield for Roanoke meets behind. Both conferences broken up. Cundiff ahead in the count, 1-0. Oh. Carnes misses off the outside corner. Two-zero count to Cundiff, who represents the tying run. Pitch, called strike at the knees. Cundiff hitting 348 this season. A pair of infield flies. Certainly uncharacteristic for what Cundiff has been doing this season for Lynchburg. Better high pitch, fouled away. That makes it two and two. once again down to their final strike. Caldwell, the runner at first. Carnes, winds, fires, misses high. We'll see another 
Tully got herself into a full count, had a long battle, ultimately drew the walk. We'll get to see Caldwell in motion at first. Payoff pitch on its way. Set up the first baseline. Great effort from DeFava, but the first baseman won't get there. We'll see another 3-2 pitch now. Pitch count for Carnes up to 116. Another 3-2. Another foul ball. Energy high in the Lynchburg dugout. Cundiff looks to continue the battle. Another payoff pitch. Popped out to second and Cundiff. The third time today, he sends a flare out to Bostic, who's there to make the catch. And this time, it's for the final out of the contest. Out number 21 against Lynchburg's offense. And Roanoke holds on and takes game one, four to two. Jada Carnes has her 13th win and complete game on the season. And Roanoke elevates to 18 and seven on the season, four and three in conference play, while Lynchburg falls to 16 and 15 overall, six and three in conference action. Final score, 4-2, nine hits for Roanoke, seven for Lynchburg, each team had an error. We will step aside for roughly 30 minutes. When we come back, we'll get you set with everything you need to know for game two, our twin bill between Roanoke and Lynchburg on LHSN.
Set for game two of a doubleheader between Lynchburg and the number 10 team in the country, Roanoke. Game one goes the side of the Maroons, 4-2 final score. Roanoke edges past Lynchburg to make it four consecutive wins. Emily Charlton gets a start for Lynchburg in game two. She'll start her day taking on second baseman Mary Bostic. That'll be followed up by the first baseman Jordan DeFava, then Shannon Hester, who will be the opposing pitcher opposite of Charlton. Welcome back, everybody. You're watching LHS Sense. TJ Wingard here with you as Charlton readies. Delivers at the knees. Count to one and one. Bostic in game one, went one for four, had a single in the fourth inning. Off speed pitch. Bostic way out in front of it. Now pitchers count for Charlton. Charlton, one of the best arms inside the ODAC specifically. Limiting free passes about second in the ODAC and strikeout to walk ratio and walks per seven. Less than one walk per seven innings toss. 0.81 if we want to be precise. And the day starts with a strikeout. Bostic goes down. Charlton retires the first she faces and now will take on DeFava, first baseman for Roanoke, went three for four last game. Singles in each of her first three times up. Charlton deals, just misses off the outside corner. Long pause for Charlton. Has the signs, gets a chopper right around home plate. Makes the count 0-2. For Charlton, this becomes start number 12 of the season, appearance number 20. Lefty has tossed 77 and two thirds innings so far this year. 48 strikeouts to nine walks with opponents hitting 248 against. 0-2, this is outside. Batter made today for Charlton is Carly Hudnall, who's behind the plate in game one as well. Infield from left to right has Carly Cundiff at third. Ruby Stewart starting again at short. Ashley Haley back at second with Sophie Tully over at first. Off-speed pitch, cut on and missed. The throw up the first baseline completes the second strike of the day for Emily Charlton. And to finish off the Lynchburg defensive lineup, Lexi Powell starting in right, in center is Kaylee Hacken, out in left field is Gracie Dooley. First two go down swinging, Shannon Hester, good old fashioned pitcher versus pitcher battle here in the top of the first. First pitch swinging, in the air and out of play. Hester, as well as Rachel Serbaugh, who is on deck, picked up two run home runs in game one for Hester. It came in the third, part of a one for four showing. Couple of RBIs, obviously, for Hester. Played at shortstop last game. Grounder sent to Cundiff at third. The throw to first is in time. To complete a one, two, three, first inning toss by Emily Charlton. Roanoke goes down in order. We will step aside and come back with the home half the first. Get our first look at the Lynchburg order in game two.
bottom of the first inning. Perfect top half of the frame tossed by Emily Charlton. And looking to match that effort is Shannon Hester. We saw Roanoke ace of the rotation. Jada Carnes in game one. Next most innings pitched is Hester with including game one totals. Roughly 45, 55-ish innings being the difference. 55-ish innings separating Hester and Carnes. Swung on a miss by Hudnall. Count moves to 0-2. But with the start, this becomes the sixth of the season, eighth appearance all told for Hester. He's throwing 34 in the third. The ORA sits at 3.67. 26 strikeouts to 11 walks. An opponent's hitting 259 against. 0-2 skipped across the plate to Hudnall. He said a ball and two strikes to the Lynchburg catcher who went one for four in game one. Still a pitcher's count, but Hester misses in the same spot to even it up at two and two. Batter made today for Hester is Rachel Serbaugh in the infield from left to right has Michaela Austin at third, Lily Burns starting at short, Neri Bostic. Gets the nod at second again, and Jordan DeFava is starting at first. In the outfield from right to left has Riley Krogan in right. Starting at center is Sammy Murphy, and out in left is Keith Craghead. Even count it two and two. Off speed, drops in for a strike. Hudnall turned her head, watched it find the zone, and goes down as the first strike of the day for Hester. Lead off bat down for Lynchburg. Hornets as a team hit 290 on the season, 357 on base percentage. That's top five in the ODAC. And they're top seven in the slugging percentage department at 397. Lexi Powell had her first double of the season in game one. She's retired each of the next three times she came to the plate, making her one for four in game one. Hard hit, but right back to Hester. Perks of being a shortstop taken over on the mound. Quick reflexes, pay dividends, and Powell becomes out number two. Looking to keep the first inning alive as Kaylee Hackett reached all three times in game one. Pair of singles was also hit by a pitch. Sophomore underneath this one, fly ball, left field side. It'll make its way out of play. Hackett has been huge all year long for Lynchburg. Came today, top 10 in the ODAC, tied for seventh to be precise in RBIs this season, hitting 299. That average now up and above 300 if you include the two hits in game one. Hackett sends it to Hester, who again is there to make the play. Consecutive 1 3 putouts. Complete a perfect bottom of the first toss by Shannon Hester. Six up, six down through the first inning of softball. We'll step aside and come back with the top of the second. You're watching Roanoke in Lynchburg on LHSN.
On to the top of the second. Part of the Roanoke order set to the plate, leading things off as the catcher, Rachel Serba. First pitch swinging, sent to the circle, and Emily Charlton matching the efforts of Shannon Hester there to start up the 1 3 put out. Serba down for the first out to inning number two. Both pitchers pitch a perfect frame. Charlton had a pair of strikeouts, then a grounder to third for Shannon Hester in the bottom of the first. It was a strikeout with back to back ground balls. Back to Hester in the circle. That's how we start the top of the second. Now it's Kate Hool at the plate. Designated player, second straight game. Game in the day's doubleheader with a 365 average on the season. Lines this one the other way and foul. Count now even at one and one. Lynchburg in game one, used two arms. It's Kaylee Dorsett traveling through three and two thirds, then Bree Carter the rest of the way. And it was the first appearance for Carter, not surrendering an earned run since her first appearance in the season, going four to third against Averitt. Grounder up the middle and through to center field. Our first base runner is Kate Hool, one out single. One on, one down. Kayla Austin, third baseman, will step to the plate for the first time. The back half of the doubleheader. Talking more about Charlton, however, most recent appearance. Two innings and a start against Randolph Macon. A tough appearance for Charlton. Four earned runs surrendered. Against the Yellow Jackets. Grounder to short. Throw to second is in time. 6 4. Fielder's choice will take Poole off the base paths. And Austin has the new runner at first. Only takes one pitch for Lynchburg and Emily Charlton to find the second out of the inning. Lily Burns did not play in game one. Gets the nod, it's short. Hester in the circle in game two. First pitch to Burns, misses low. Burns the season hitting 250. Today becomes her 11th start, 12th game played. Another pitch missing low and away from Charlton. Hitters count 2-0. Oh. You look at the last four appearances for Charlton. It was a start against Randolph Macon, and then prior to that, three consecutive relief appearances against Virginia Wesleyan, and then both games against Mary Washington. As We'll talk about that once we get to the top of the third as Charlton makes the throw to first to retire Burns for the final out to the top of the second. One runner left on. And another zero put up on the board. Looking for offense as we step aside and come back to the bottom of the second. Lynchburg will send four, five, six to the plate. Just one base runner so far for either side. Another inning of work for Shannon Hester. She takes on Sophie Tully, Anna Grace Terrell, and Gracie Dooley in the bottom of the second inning. Lynchburg celebrating their code red home games, if you will. Every sport has one home event where all other student athletes from other teams come out, support, also push hard for you know, loved ones, friends as well. Make sure they come out to that contest. Today is the Code Red event for Lynchburg softball. Comes at a great time, playing host to the number 10 team in the country. Lynchburg drops game one, and Hornets hoping strong crowd fuels the Hornets to a winning game two. Tully, the grounder to Burns at short, is retired for out number one. 
It's also set the expectation this game. This is an awesome cause, one of the theme events that Lynchburg has going on this season. It works in tandem with Brenda Tracy's story. Tracy was on the campus earlier this season, and really her organization set the expectations focused on working through men, try to limit sexual assault and harassment, very important things of that nature by working with men, and advocacy groups. as well as engagement with agencies, working with supervisors and families as well. Lynchburg softball team giving out teal wristbands, teal the color that Tracy's organization uses as their marking color, if you will. And it's a powerful story. She was on campus, as I noted earlier this year. The detail, what led her to create the foundation and ultimately what that the expectations goal is as Anna Grace Terrell will go down looking. Second strikeout today for Hester. Both have been backwards K's. Five up, five down to start today for Hester. But going back to my original point, those two events running in tandem, creating a really nice gathering here at Moon Field, trying to fuel the Hornets to a game two win and another. Home doubleheader that results in a split. Lynchburg can steal game two. It would be you know, six for six on hitting that mark. Split doubleheaders earlier this season against William Peace, Averitt, Methodist, more recently against Bridgewater and Mary Washington. Dooley with a drive back up the middle and into center field. Wide turnaround first, but Dooley holds there. In the second inning, both teams get their first hit. It's Kate Hool. The top half of this inning, and Gracie Dooley, the home half, who now stands at first base and brings Carly Cundiff to the plate. Cundiff 0 for 3 with three pop outs to second. This comes after a week ago being named Athlete of the Week for the ODAC. Cundiff hit over 400, had a couple of home runs and 11 RBIs. Cundiff sends a ground ball right side, away from the bag goes to Fava. And because of that, a little bit of miscommunication maybe between Bostic and to Fava. It's an infield single for Cundiff. Considering how uncomfortable maybe she looked at the plate in the first game, the results certainly wouldn't, weren't what she was looking for. An infield single, you'll take it all the same. Trying to get Cundiff back on track. Two on, two away. Ruby Stewart. Short stop. 0 for 1, also drew a walk in her two plate appearances in game one. Hester, off speed pitch. They'll say that Stewart went around. Gotten out 1 and 2. Temperature has risen a little bit here in Lynchburg, Virginia. It's still in the low 50s, however, with the wind blowing towards left field now. 2-2, a weak swing, and Stewart goes down as a third strikeout victim against Shannon Hester. Two runners left on for Lynchburg. Another zero put on the board next to the Hornets line. Through two scoreless, headed to the top of the third. Rono said 8-9-1 to the dish.
Caitlin Craig had to lead things off for the Maroons. She'll be followed by right fielder Riley Krogan, then the top of the lineup with Mary Bostic to up third this inning. Emily Charlton faced the minimum plus one so far. First pitch of the third. This is the zone. Just one hit allowed so far for Charlton. Two strikeouts, no walks for the lefty. A miss down and outside for Charlton, whose command is stellar. Less than one walk per seven innings, and she's a huge reason why. Lynchburg, one of the top dogs in the conference, so to speak, and walks per seven as a team, 1.68. Charlton fields her position once again. The throw to first is in time to retire Craighead. Charlton had to field two separate grounders, back to the mound in the second, one from Serbaugh, and then the last one coming from Lily Burns, and that was the final out to the second. Fittingly so, first out to the third, their 1 3 ground out. Krogan watches the first pitch, low and outside. Charlton, a sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. Look at this Lynchburg pitching staff. Just like the rest of the roster, it's a young group. Charlton, a sophomore. Bree Carter looked really good in game one, also a sophomore. Getting the start in game one was Kaylee Dorsis, a freshman. Angela Sparandeo, the junior. A lot of ways serves as the veteran of the bunch. A ton of credit to assistant coach Michelle Lehan, former pitcher for the Hornets, heading up the rotation in the bullpen. Charlton misses up above the letters. Count is three and one. First time seeing Krogan at the plate today. Did not start in game one, nor did Krogan have a pinch hit opportunity. 3-1, softly hit, and just fair up the right field line. Second hit of the game for Roanoke. Lineup card will turn over. Bostic went down on strikes, her first A-B. Misses outside with the first pitch. On, and including the final four innings, which Roanoke was unable to push a run across. It's now six consecutive scoreless innings for Roanoke. Softly hit, but through to right field. Inside out swing. Bostic has her first hit of the game, and there's now two on with just one away. Rogan moves up to second. Bostic aboard at first. Jordan Defaba to the plate for a second time. Defaba went down on strikes. Their first at bat. First pitch swing, cut on and missed. Carlton out in front of the count, 0 and 1. All four runs in game one as well if you missed it. For Rona, come courtesy the long ball. Two run home run from Serbal in the first. Two run shot from Hester in the third. Provided all the offense, as mentioned. Scoreless through innings four, five, six, and seven. Without a run in the first two of game two. Chance to change that here. Good speed on the base paths. 1 1. Set to right. Blocked up by Powell. Miss on the throw to second. The Aaron throw will allow the lead runner, Riley Krogan, to score from third. So it'll be a single that moves all runners up. There was a chance to take Bostic off the base pass with a clean throw to second. But E9 gives Roanoke the first run of the game. just behind the circle for the Lynchburg infield. Now 
Charlton. Is set to face Hester. The Roanoke pitcher overall with the ground out to third. Two on in front of her, just one away. First pitch, fouled off her leg. So they run this inning unearned against Charlton. Off-speed pitch, waved at and missed. Hester way out in front of the pitch from Charlton, now 0-2. A great spot, especially coming off that off-speed delivery from Charlton. A lot of different options the Southpaw can go to here. Elevates, Hester won't chase out of the zone. Boss to get second. Davava on it first. One, two. Golfed, shallow center field. Back to make the play is Stewart for out number two. Big second out of the inning for Lynchburg. Looking to hold the damage at one run across. Rachel Serba, 0 for 1. Two games combined. It's 1 for 4 with a walk and, of course, the two-run home run to open scoring in the front end of our doubleheader. At bat call, starts with a call strike on the outside corner. Servant, though, has been struggling at the plate. For today's double, a 154 average, just two doubles, and the home run in game one for first of the season. And RBI is four and five. And Serba has been a regular in the lineup. Starts in each of these two games. Ever up to 21 games played, 19 in starts. All Odak's second team last season. Charlton misses in the dirt. Hudnall couldn't keep it in front of her. A wild pitch moves Bostic to third, and DeFaba advances to second. It's a 1 2 count, however. Spot there where Charlton gets a swing and miss. You don't really worry about it. Pitch being in the dirt. Now time for Charlton to execute. Nicked off the bat and in it out of the glove of Hudnall. Serball. There's just enough to live to see another pitch, aided by Hudnall unable to hold on. Another 1 2 offering. Off speed, cut on and missed. Strikeout number three for Emily Charlton, and it comes at a great time. Two runners left on in scoring position, but run across for Roanoke, an unearned run as Riley Krogan scores on the E9 to make it 1-0. We will step aside, come back with the bottom of the third. The Hornets look to respond. The number 10 team in the country, Roanoke, open scoring in game two, just as they did in game one. This time it's an unearned run. It's Lexi Powell with a fielding error. Check that, make that a throwing error. The top half of the third allows Riley Krogan to score on the play. But now for the bottom of the third, actually Haley will lead things off, be followed by the top of the order with Carly Hudnall, then Lexi Powell with a chance for redemption.
off the end of the bat. Rolled behind the plate. Excuse me, Haley now down the count 0 and 2. First AB of the game for the Hornets' second baseman. And they went 0 for 1, laid down a sack bunt for eighth of the season. The front end of our doubleheader. Sent to the screen. Battle will continue between Haley and Hester. Hester tossed a 1 2 3 first. Gave up a pair of singles with two away. Lasting was able to bounce back, strike out Ruby Stewart to get through the inning unscathed. Ground ball on the left side. Gathered by Austin. The throw to first is in time. And Hester has now made it a full time through the lineup card. Looked good so far. Outside of the two two-out singles last inning. It's been three strikeouts, four ground outs. That's gotten Hester to where she is now. One down and seeing Hudnall for a second time. First pitch. Is it called strike? Hudnall swings to the 0-1 to make it nothing at two. Hudnall went down on strikes her first at bat. It was on a breaking pitch. She watched it drop in for a called third strike. Hester misses high and away. Roanoke looking to make it five consecutive wins. Dating back to a game two win and a split against Randolph Macon. Sweep of Shenandoah, then took game one today. How about this hustle for Mary Bostic? Hudnall trying to use her speed to her advantage. Bostic new, not a whole lot of room for error. Lays out, shuffle toss to first. Good for out number two. Three in a row set down by Hester. Looking for her second one, two, three frame tossed. To get the perfect inning, she'll have to go through Powell, fights off the first pitch she gets. Powell over one, grounded out to the circle. The first two and a half innings, if you want to include the top of the third, which we just saw. All right, one, three put outs, ground outs towards the circle. Good sign that pitchers working low in the zone, pitching to soft contact. Of course, Roanoke aided by the fact Hester was playing short last game. So someone who's more than acclimated, building hot shot ground balls in her direction. Righty misses high and outside. Still a pitcher's count, one and two. Lined up, another grounder to Austin. Throw to first, scooped up by DeFava. That's another one, two, three inning toss by Shannon Hester. And after scoring the top of the third, Roanoke holds on to that one nothing lead and sends us to the top of the fourth where we'll see Kate Hole lead things off.
One nothing your score into the top of the fourth inning at Moon Field. Roanoke leads Lynchburg. Back half of a doubleheader. Kate Hool will lead things off, then followed by Michaela Austin and Lily Burns. It was an unearned run last inning. Charge to Emily Charlton looking for a bounce back frame. Southpaw, the foul ball, the first pitch she tosses in inning number four. Four hits so far. Roanoke offense, three came last inning. And now we're into that second time through the lineup card for the Maroons. See how much of an advantage that becomes against Charlton. Off speed. This is high. And must have grazed the jersey of Hool. Hip batter. Not the way Charlton wanted to start the inning. First free pass, hit by pitch or walk issued by Charlton. Now sees Michaela Austin, very active in the field, specifically in the bottom of the third. About the plate, Austin over one, hit into a fielder's choice. Last inning, check that, make that back in the second. Hudnall, throw up the first baseline, close, but not in time. Let's catch Hool. Hit hard to short and under the glove of Stewart. Poole moves up to second. And Austin aboard at first. Looks like Lynchburg will be charged their second error of the game, 49th of the season. So two runners on without any hits this inning for Ronan. Lily Burns, second plate appearance. Starts with the pitch outside the zone. Shortstop, send a grounder back to Charlton in the circle to end the second. Burns underneath this pitch. Out to shallow right. Powell was calling for it, as was Haley. Haley there to make the catch. Lynchburg fortunate that the miscommunication didn't result in a blooper hitting the outfield grass. Burns becomes a much needed first out. Now Charlton faces the eight hitter, Caitlin Craghead, barring a double play, then sees the nine hitter, Ellie Krogan. Chance for Charlton to get through the inning without issuing a run. And Coach Simmons comes out of the dugout wasting no time. Wants to talk with her infield as well as Charlton and Hudnall. Anytime you see that type of miscommunication, you know, Powell and Haley both trying to go out there and make a play, which you can appreciate as a coach, but both players are like, I got it, I got it, I got it. Eventually, that circumstance will come where neither end up having it. Comes a bloop single on this point. Lynchburg down by a run. Needing a win in game two to split. Unforced errors like that could cost you down the stretch. Two on, one down for Craghead. Watch the first pitch high. Craghead was hitting the seventh spot in game one. Went one for three, also laid down a sacrifice bunt. Now into the eight hole for game two. Makes the pitch down to the dirt. That's the second time up in as many innings for the Maroons left fielder. Lead off bat last inning, grounded out to Charlton to start the frame. And a hitter's count, 2 0. Grounder to Haley at second. The throw to first is in time. Relay. Not going to be in time to retire Craghead, but 4 6. Fielder's choice takes Austin off the base paths. Poole moves up to third, and now Craghead is aboard at first. Big spot for Charlton, trying to put a zero next to the Roanoke line. Taking on the nine hitter, Krogan. 
who is the player to score on the E9. Last inning, the only run we've seen so far. The Roanoke right fielder hitting 267 this season, does have seven RBIs. And starting here in game two becomes her 17th start of the season. Carlton talked about it a couple times throughout this broadcast. Big opponent and a big strength of hers is the ability to work ahead in the counts, limit free passes. As this game's gone on, finding herself more often than not, falling behind in the count. But here, 2-0 setting, does not hurt Charlton as Krogan will fly out to right field. Two runners on and stranded for Roanoke and 1-0. It remains to be our score as we step aside and come back with the bottom of the fourth. Lynchburg looking to break through in the scoring column. Home half of the fourth inning. Four in a row retired by Shannon Hester, who will now take on Kaylee Hank and Sophie Tilly and Anna Grace Terrell for a second time. Hack it over one with the grounder. Back to Hester to end the first. This one will get past the circle and make its way into center field. Third hit of the game for Lynchburg and Kaylee Hackett after going two for two in game one as her first base knock in game two. Sophie Tully grounded out to short. Lead off bat in second. The offense for the Hornets came one run across in the bottom of the second, one more in the bottom of the sixth in game one. Fell short, 4-2. Things got interesting once we got to the seventh, but both teams left eight runners on, but obviously with the team that comes up short, that feels like it weighs a little more heavy. Roanoke was aided by two two-run home runs. That one empty the base paths, and two ensure those runners on come around to score, obviously. Lynchburg with 13 home runs this year towards the top of the ODAC. We're able to get runners on in game one, just couldn't string them together and turn them into offensive, you know, offensive production in regards to runs. Three O count for Tully. Certainly could be a player with the green light. Hester delivers a strike, makes the count three and one. Hackett has 10 stolen bases this season. Three one pitch from Hester, high and away. Five pitch walk will move Hackett up to second. First walk issued by Hester in the contest. Looks like we'll have a runner on at first for Tully. This is Skylar Sams with the honors. So Hackett at second, Sams at first. Lots of speed on the base pass for Lynchburg. Anna Grace Terrell went down on strikes. Her first time up. Reigning ODAC Athlete of the Week. Really swung it well in the doubleheader against Mary Washington.
two games combined, two for three in each contest. Here, Terrell lays down the bunt, the throw to first, not in time. Infield single, and Lynchburg has loaded the bases. The Hornets have not played with a lead yet this afternoon. With Hackett at third, representing the tying run, Skylar Sams, who was up to second, representing the go-ahead run. And after laying down the bunt, Terrell's at first. Gracie Dooley one for one with a hot shot single back to center. Her first time up. This at bat starts with a called strike to Dooley. Left fielder hitting 390 on the season. This is her 17th start, 21st game played. Also has 14 RBIs, can add to that total here. Off speed pitch, Dooley way out in front of it, pops it up just behind second. Over to make the grab, Boston. That's where it had to start for Hester. A strikeout or something soft in the infield. Now she needs it again against Cundiff. Breaking pitch down in the dirt. Cundiff one for one with an infield single. But if you're Cundiff, you'll take it after 0 for 3 with three pop outs to second. Jada Carnes in game one. Again, hit softly to first. The throw to the plate is in time. Defava makes the throw to Serba, covering the plate. 3-2 put out. Cundiff now the runner at first. Terrell up to second. Sams the lead runner at third with Hackett coming off the base paths as a result of the fielder's choice. Quick meeting between Coach Simmons and Ruby Stewart. A huge spot for Stewart to be put in. A freshman from Vienna, Virginia. Bases loaded, two down. Again, Lynchburg has not played with a lead today. With one swing of the bat, that can change, especially given the two-out setting. Runners will be moving on contact. All while Hester. Looking to get through her fourth inning of action. And looking to keep the Hornets scoreless once again. First pitch of the at-bat, misses high. Stewart 0 for 1 with a strikeout. That was the last punch out Hester's had so far today, and it was for the final out in the second. Stewart. Takes a pitch on the outside corner, count even at one and one. It's become a mostly cloudy day in Lynchburg, Virginia. The wind's still blowing out towards left center field. That'll aid right-handed bats like Stewart. An even count, breaking pitch. Misses the zone. That was the 50th pitch of the day for Shannon Hester, who's traveled through three and two thirds, three strikeouts, one walk, no earned runs. 2-1 is low. There's nowhere to put Stewart. Three one. Called strike on the outside corner. And with two away, the base is loaded. Runners will be in motion. Payoff pitch. High and outside. An RBI walk for Ruby Stewart. Puts Lynchburg into the scoring column. Sams touches home plate. We're tied up one all. Coach Simmons comes out of the dugout once again. For Stewart, becomes just the fifth RBI of the freshman season. And 
Maddie Grace Terrell, the lead runner at third. Cundiff behind her at second. Stewart on at first. It was scheduled to be Ashley Haley. Instead, it'll be Sarah English. English had a pinch hit opportunity in game one. Right-handed bat watches the first pitch in for a strike. There was a single in the home half of the sixth for English, hitting for Ruby Stewart in that inning. Made it all the way up to second after a wild pitch. That is where English was stranded. Grounder through to center field. One run already across, rounding third, the throw to the plate, not in time to catch Cundiff. Pinch hit, two RBI single for Sarah English. And for the first time today, Lynchburg plays with the lead, three to one. Stewart moves up to second on the play. Coach Simmons again out of the dugout. And for Carly Hudnall, we'll see Caroline Joy hit in her place. Those two, more often than not, split their time behind the plate. But for Hudnall, just like Haley, who was pinch hit for a moment ago, I would assume we see them back out in the field once we head to the top of the fifth. First pitch to Joy. This is off the outside corner. Hudnall was 0 for 2 with the strikeout looking at a ground out to second. Meanwhile, you bring Joy off the bench. 298 hitter, somebody with plenty of pop, five extra base hits, three doubles, two home runs. Joy takes a mighty cut, comes up empty, moves the count to 1 and 1. There's an arm up and throwing the Roanoke bullpen. Lauren Hoffman starting to get loose. Hester with another miss. Joy the eighth hitter of the inning for Lynchburg. Nicks this one into the glove of Serball to make it a 2-2 count with two away. Your Joy reaches, Lexi Powell is the hitter in the on-deck circle. Hester misses down below the knees. Count inflates to three and two. Again, runners will be in motion. Payoff pitch. Wave that a miss. Joy becomes strikeout victim number four against Shannon Hester. Two runners left on, but three runs across for Lynchburg. Gives the Hornets their first lead of the afternoon. RBI walk for Ruby Stewart, then a two RBI pinch hit single for Sarah English. Moves Lynchburg out in front as we head to the top of the fifth. Top of the fifth inning. 
We'll have the top of the order come to the plate for Roanoke. That's Mary Bostic, Jordan DeFava, and Shannon Hester working against Emily Charlton, who now has three runs of offense on her back, all coming across last half inning. Stewart drew the bases loaded walk. Sarah English called off the bench, came through with a two RBI single to center. To give the Hornets their first lead of the afternoon. Now Charlton looking to keep Lynchburg out in front. Two, two misses to Bostic. The count grows to two balls and no strikes. Second baseman, one for two. Hit came in her last at bat. And all the way up to third, but that's where Bostic was stranded. Another miss. Count now at three and a half. There was two runners left on last inning for Roanoke. First hitter this inning, though, Boston draws the four-pitch walk. That is certainly uncharacteristic of Emily Charlton. First walk issue today, but we did talk about it at the very end of the fourth with Riley Krogan at the plate, who flew out to right field for the final out of that inning, despite being ahead in the count 2-0. and When through the third and the fourth in specific, Charlton started to find herself more often than not pitching behind in the count, and that's just not going to be something that matches well with her pitch style and the strengths of her game. Runner takes off, first pitch is cut on a miss by DeFava, but the throw to second offline and Bostic successfully swipes second. Bostic with plenty of speed, now in scoring position for DeFava, who's one for two. Had a hitter last time up, struck out back in the first. Sun peeks through the clouds. Time call to the plate. Lynchburg looking to even out their home record at six and six. Make it another split double header at home. And also bump up their conference record to seven three. Lynchburg entered today tied for second in the ODAC standings with Randolph making it six and two. Pitch drops in for a strike to DeFava. 0-2 count for the first baseman. We want today for Roanoke. Six in the conference standings. You win game one. If you can make it a sweep, you go from five and three, or excuse me, three and three to five and three. Next thing you know, Roanoke right back in the top of the pecking order. They were picked to finish third in the ODAC preseason poll. DeFava flies out to right. Out number one at the top of the fifth. Shannon Hester, chance to help herself out. Pitcher's gone 0 for 2. Ground out and a pop out to short. Here we go, Em. Hester holds the best batting average in the ODAC, 469. Second and on base percentage at 500 even. Prior to today's doubleheader, of course. And Hester, deep drive, left center field. She's got another. If you're a pitcher, you can't help yourself much more than that. Two-run shot ties us up three all. Third home run on the season for Hester. That means, if you're listening closely, Hester had one long ball before today's doubleheader. How about two through the two games? And with more softball left to be played. Another two-run shot for Hester. RBI total, by the way, now up to 17 on the season. That leads the way for the Maroons offense. First pitch to Rachel Serbaugh, so you know, two run home runs. She had one in the first inning in game one. Here in game two, though, 0 for 2. Grounded out to the circle, then struck out. Carlton misses down in the dirt. That two run home run is a backbreaker for Lynchburg. You work hard, you finally get your first lead of the game. It's not only just this game, but first lead of the day. There's so much more emotional you know, boost behind that than just a half inning later to have that taken away, and now you're in a new softball game, tied up 3-3. Huge response for Roanoke. A sequence of unfortunate events for the Hornets. Still a tie game, lots of softball left to be played. 
Fly ball, center field, Hackett won't get to it. One hop off the wall, throw to second, not in time. And the big bats in the Roanoke order causing chaos for Lynchburg. Zerbaugh follows up the two-run home run with a double to center. And the Maroons knock on the door, had a possibility to retake the lead. Conference in the circle, the Hornets infield, Charlton and Hudnall. Lynchburg to buckle down and get through the fifth at a tie score 3 3. Serbaugh, despite being a catcher, does run well. And K. Hewell has yet to be retired here in game two. Singled in the second, was then hit by a pitch in the fourth. This is what we were talking about today. Serves as a huge opportunity for Roanoke to go from a middle of the pack to top of the conference standing type of team. Lynchburg dropped both games today. You go from tied for second down to that 4-5 order in the conference standings. They're going to say it goes foul off the bat of Houle. Hudnall came up looking to make a play. And instead, it's an 0-1 count to start. Alton now throwing 65 pitches, make it 66. She misses here to make it one and one. Lefty's gone through four and a third, three earned runs, three strikeouts, one walk issued. One one, skied out of play. Strikeout would do wonders for Charlton to get through this inning, holding the damage at two. And Charlton will have that strikeout. Cut on and missed. Poole back to the dugout. First time she's been retired here in game two. Third strikeout for Charlton, but the first since inning number one. Michaela Austin to the plate. First pitch swinging, drives it into center. Hackett can't field it cleanly. Rounding third and scoring is Rachel Serbaugh. Lynchburg with three in the bottom of the fourth. Roanoke gets three of their own in the top of the fifth. Maroons retake the lead at 4-3. Despite Hackett's Triple fielding the base hit. We ruled an RBI single for Michaela Austin. That drives home serve ball as a result. Coach Simmons out of the dugout again. There is a pitcher up and throwing in the Lynchburg bullpen. Could be Sparandeo, it could be Bree Carter, who threw it really well in game one. It could be Keely Dorsis for that matter. Emily Clawson also in the mix as an option, and Logan Curtis as well. And Lynchburg will make a pitching change. We will step aside and come back and tell you all about the new arm for the Hornets as Roanoke retakes the lead, 4-3 with three runs across. So far on the top of the fifth.
Bree Carter comes out of the pen for the second consecutive game for Lynchburg. Carter was excellent in game one, did not allow an earned run in her relief appearance, came on to get the final out in the fourth, and then traveled through the rest of the way, including full innings in the fifth, sixth, and seventh. And now looking to do something similar, trying to get the final out to the fifth, and ideally for Lynchburg, Carter will take you the rest of the way. Carter starts her day, or this appearance, I should say. That's going to be a tricky one to navigate. Taking on Lily Burns, misses on the first pitch. Burns, 0 for 2 today, takes this pitch on the inside corner. I beg your pardon, the count now 1 and 2. Burns came up in the second as well as the fourth. Grounded out to the circle, then flew out to right. Hit hard on the ground and into left field. Not bad for somebody stuck in a 1-2 count. Burns has her first hit of the game. Nikayla Austin advances to second. The top of the fifth will go on at least a little longer. Caitlin Craghead, the next stop. Courtesy runner on at first for Roanoke. Or I beg your pardon, over at second, Morgan Clark. Now the lead runner, taking over for Austin. So a little bit more speed on the base pass now for the Maroons. You got it, Bree. Here we go. And with two way in the inning, running on contact, that little bit of speed could make a difference. Base hits the outfield. If Clark is at step or two faster to make a difference in a bang bang play potentially at the plate umpires and run okay coach Mike Mitchell sorting out the substitution Carter will get set to face Craghead and actually gonna have Clark run at first now apologies for that confusion but makes you feel better I'm right there with you. So Clark is going to run it first now. Burns no longer on the base paths. And then Austin back to being the lead runner at second. Carter deals. First pitch. This is low. And it looks like we have a pinch hitter for a crackhead. This is Madison Quartz. Quartz watches another miss from Carter. Hitters count 2 0. Quartz had a pinch hit single in game one. The only time we got to see her at the plate. Another miss for Carter. Count now at 3 0. 23rd game played. Quartz also asserted 9. Hitting 395 this year. That is a Great bat to be able to call up your bench for Coach Mitchell. 3-0. Another miss, and it's a four-pitch walk. Here we go, get this bat out. Issued by Carter to load the bases. Austin up to third. Clark on, now at second with Quartz aboard at first. I beg your pardon, hit by pitch. But ball four hit by pitch, take your liking. Free pass issued by Carter one way or another. Coach Mitchell back out of the first base dugout. Here we go, Bree, get this batter. And we'll have pinch hitter coming to the plate instead of Riley Krogan. This will be number 33, Carly Patterson, junior catcher from Shelby, North Carolina. Patterson will get her first 
plate appearance of the day. And at the same time, Lynchburg will also make a pitching change. We'll take a small break. Roanoke has retaken the lead 4-3 and knocked on the door to extend that one run advantage. Kaylee Dorses, third pitcher to be used this game for Lynchburg. Dorses was the starter in game one. Made it through three and two-thirds, gave up six hits, one walk, had three strikeouts. Gave up all four runs and ultimately got the loss in game one. Now Dorses comes out of the pen. This becomes appearance number 21 of the season. 14 as a reliever. Take on Carly Patterson. Bases are loaded. Austin at third, Clark at second. Quartz, after being hit by a pitch at first. Popped up and out of play. 0-2 the count. Patterson hitting 333 this season. Today marks the 13th game play. It's four hits, 12 at bats, so a small Sample size for Patterson, but a chance to make a huge impact on this contest. Three run top of the fifth. Maroons retake the lead with a chance to push it out and beyond a single run advantage. 0-2. Hit hard to right field. Powell tracks back and will make the grab on the run. Huge play from Powell. Great execution for Dorses to find the final out to the top of the fifth inning. Roanoke sends three to the plate, or excuse me, send nine to the plate, bring three across the plate to retake the lead, 4-3. We're stepping aside and coming back with the bottom of the fifth to see the Hornets can respond. Bottom of the sixth inning, Lynchburg. Excuse me, bottom of the fifth inning. Lynchburg looking to respond after surrendering three in the top of the fifth. The Hornets sent eight to the plate, scored three of their own in the bottom of the fourth. It's Lexi Powell to lead things off in the home half of the fifth inning. Powell's gone 0 for 2, rounded out to the circle, then to third. After Powell will be Kaylee Hackett, then Sophie Tully. Shannon Hust Hester. Stays out on the mound for Rono. There was some bullpen activity for the Maroons. With Lauren Hoffman starting to get hot in the pen. But Coach Mitchell decides to leave Hester on the mound for the fifth. 2-0 in for a strike. Breaking pitch, down and away, three and one. 
and specifically with Hackett on deck and then Tully in the hole followed by Anna Grace Terrell. If anywhere to reach. Hackett, Tully, Terrell represented the spark that got the three run bottom of the fourth underway. Those three went single walk, single. Near the bottom of the fifth also starts the leadoff runner reaching. Powell draws the walk and is aboard at first. Just the second walk issued by Hester. Hackett, one for two. Shows bunt, jabs, comes up empty, trails on the count, 0 and 1. <laughs> 0 1, Hackett again trying to lay it down, and again coming up empty. Pitchers counted 0 and 2. The bunt has to be off by now. Hackett has to battle down 0-2 in the count. Tough hole to climb out of. Hester, meanwhile, chance for her fifth strikeout. Misses with the 0-2. Another miss. Not even a two and two. This is a tough spot for the Hornets. Emotional high of scoring three in the bottom of the fourth, retaking, or excuse me, taking their first lead of the day. Certainly the apex of the afternoon so far for Lynchburg. Just to have that immediately wiped away. And there's a cliche in basketball, get a three, give a three. That's basically what we saw in the last two half innings between the bottom of the fourth and top of the fifth. Roanoke having the response. Nine to the plate for the Maroons, and three come across. Thanks to an RBI single from Michaela Austin. That was following up a two-run home run from Shannon Hester to tie it up. After helping herself, Hester, say if the score were to stay the same the rest of the way, would be today's winning pitcher, as opposed to after giving up the three in the bottom of the fourth, would have been in line for the loss. Another 2-2 to Hackett. This is high, and Lynchburg center fielder does a great job after not being able to lay down the bunt, falls in behind, 0-2. We'll get it back to a full count. Payoff pitch. Hit past the third baseman, Austin. Into left field, Powell has to hurry back to second and just barely able to make it before the throw comes from Burns. Single from Hackett, has two runners on, no outs. Sophie Tully coming to the plate. And Tully is exactly the player Lynchburg would have had, would have wanted to have come to the plate in the spot. Her and Hackett for today's doubleheader. Tied for seventh in the ODAC and RBIs, but Tully, top five in OBP, third in slugging percentage, third in total bases for the conference. 0 for 1 so far in game two. Drew Walker last time up last inning. Hester misses in the dirt. He's an average north of 400 before today's game's got underway for Tully. 23 RBIs and a chance here for the junior to be the hero of sorts. On top of this pitch from Hester, shoots it foul, third base side, count to one and one. It's a Lynchburg team that has had a knack for playing close games. I mean, look no further than game one, 4-2, final score. The front end of the twin bill. Before that, it's Randolph making a one-run game and a two-run game. Tully drives it to center, rounding third, the throw to the plate, not in time. To catch Powell in the air and throw from center. Allows Hackett to move up an extra base. She's now at third. And Tully, after the RBI single, moves up to second.
Huge RBI spot for Tully, her 24th ribby of the season. It will not officially be charged in air to the center fielder Murphy on that throw to the plate. But two runners on in scoring position for Anna Grace Terrell. One for two today is the designated player. That's after Terrell went one for three with a double in game one. Both offenses waking up the back half of game two. Terrell lost it to center. Murphy's over, makes the catch. Tagging and scoring on the play is Kaylee Hackett. And Lynchburg keeps their resolve, bounces back, and with two runs in the bottom of the fifth, jump back in front, 5-4. Still an RBI opportunity as Tully is on at second. Gracie Dooley. The chance to come through. Only one out in the inning. Dooley one for two so far. Hit came her first time up. Hester gets a called strike. Looking to hold the damage for two runs. Bring the Maroons offense to the plate with the top of the order due up. Shot foul, third base sign off the bat of Dooley. Barring a double play, we'll get to see Carly Cundiff, who is on deck. O2, high and outside. Dooley swings over it, and it was held on by Servaugh. Fifth strike of the day for Hester. Dooley down for out number two. Cundiff will be hit for. It's Jordan Brown coming to the plate. Saw Brown as a left field starter for Lynchburg in game one. Brown went 0 for 3. Pair of flyouts and a ground out as well. Hester attacks the outside corner, finds the zone, leads the count 0 1. Hester quickly to the plate, misses high. Brown coming into today's game, 295 average, 10 RBIs. Take a two out base knock. They have number 11. Tully does run well for a corner infielder. Line to right, right to Krogan, who's there to make the catch for out number three. But with two runs across, Lynchburg has jumped back ahead, 5-4, thanks in part to an RBI single from Sophie Tully, then the RBI sack fly eye from Anna Grace Terrell. We're through five, headed to the top of the six. Hornets lead the Maroons, 5-4.
The top of the sixth inning, Kaylee Dorsis out for her first full inning of action in game two, and we'll take on the top of the order. Almost re-simulating where we were to start today's doubleheader. Dorsis taking on Bostic, the Fava, then Hester, one, two, three, portion of the Maroons order, which was exactly the top three last game as well. I mean, Dorsis was the starter for Lynchburg. Made it through three and two thirds. Here the freshman falls behind two and zero oh to Bostic. He's one for two, also drawn a walk. Came around to score last inning. Bostic was a leadoff bat last inning. Also stole second while on the base paths. Dorsis to the plate. Fires a strike. Counts two and one. Lynchburg looking to make it another home doubleheader sweep. Take down the number 10 team in the country. Gone back and forth the Maroons. Past two innings. It's now a 2-2 count to Boston. There's one nothing heading to the bottom of the fourth. Lynchburg plates three, jumps ahead. Jack swing, sent to Tully, who applies the tag, and Boston down for out number one. Finish that point. Roanoke responds with three of their own last inning. Put themselves back in front 4-3, but with Lynchburg scoring two in the home half of the fifth, now lead 5-4. Just in case you missed any of the action, coming to you on LHSN. Our softball doubleheader will have the coverage of tomorrow's doubleheader against Shenandoah. All while, women's across, wins on senior day 16-8 over Bridgewater, and then later tonight, yours truly and the rest of the crew have you covered for everything you need to know with the men's lacrosse game. As the Hornets play host to Shenandoah as well. Tonight at 7. And then tomorrow, softball, host Shenandoah for a doubleheader. And baseball, host number 24, CNU. Those two teams are duking out this afternoon as well, just out at CNU. And final score of that game, Lynchburg wins on the road. Number five team in the country, the Hornets win 9-4 over the captains. Hope to have you throughout the rest of our busy weekend on LHS Sam. One, two count to, to Fava. Hornet first baseman, one for three with the hit coming in the third. Fava went three for four in game one as well. Dorsus elevates, to Fava chases and goes down swinging. First strike out of the day for Dorsus. First strike out of this game for Dorsus. Already had three in game one. Shannon Hester turns to the plate. Tied us up. Last time she was in the right-handed batter's box. Hester fouls it away. Pitcher one for three today. Two run home run. Last in it to make it 3-3. Couple hitters later, RBI single from Michaela Austin made it 4-3 Rono. Of course, as we mentioned, the two runs for Lynchburg. Hornets now lead the Maroons 5-4. Off-speed pitch from Dorsis. Missed the zone. The 1-1. Misses again. Hester reaches, Rachel Serbaugh is the hitter on deck. Popped up over the first base dugout, now to play goes. Two's across the scoreboard. Dorsis gets a line drive to right field. Powell snags it for out number three. And Keeley Dorsis tosses a perfect top of the sixth inning. Keep the Hornets out front 5-4 as we step aside and come back with the bottom of the sixth. Lynchburg looking for insurance here at Moon Field.
Shannon Hester stays out on the mound as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Lynchburg sends 8-9-1 to the plate. It's scheduled to be Ruby Stewart, Ashley Haley, then Carly Hudnall. We'll see if that is the three we see. And we'll start with the answer to that question being no. Leah Caldwell will lead us off, hitting in the place of Ruby Stewart. We saw Caldwell as a pinch runner in game one. First time seen her at the plate. Takes the first pitch from Hester for a strike. Chop foul behind home plate. Pitchers count at 0 2. O2 on its way. And way out in front of it. Caldwell goes down swinging. Sixth strike out of the day for Hester. One down to the bottom of the sixth. The job here for Hester. Keep it at a 5 4 score. That's 4 5 6 come to the plate for Roanoke. The heart of the Maroons' order due to the plate. The top of the seventh. We assume we're going to see. Kaylee Dorsett's retake the circle for Lynchburg after tossing a 1 2 3 top the sixth. All home half the frame. Ashley Haley takes the first pitch she gets for a strike. 0 1 on its way. Laying down the bunt. Fielded. The throw to first. Not in time. Infield single for Lynchburg has Haley on at first. The lineup card turning back over. We'll see Carly Hudnall return to the plate. Eighth of the game for Lynchburg. Comes from Haley. We'll have time called. Esther chatting with Serbaugh. Out in front of the mound. And the umpires will come together. It appears Coach Mitchell has come out of the bullpen, or excuse me, the dugout as well. On at least a little bit of a discussion about that last play. Looked like the throw from Hester was slightly behind Bostic covering the bag from second. That might have been just enough to hold the forward momentum. And Bostic hold up. And allow Haley to reach it first. Which the call will stand. One on one down for Hudnall. First pitch swinging, grounder to short. The throw goes to first and through the glove of DeFava. Haley holds it third. Burns could have taken the short throw to second instead. Tries to make the throw across the infield. Haley all the way up to third. Holding all aboard at first. Runners at the corners. With just one away, Lexi Powell. Step into the dish. First pitch to Powell on the inside corner for a called strike one. Powell's gone 0 for 2, drew a walk as a leadoff bat in fifth. Then came around to score the first two runs. Powell lays down the bunt. It rolls foul. Count now 1 and 1. The 0-2, through to left field. Haley scores with ease. Throw to second, not in time to catch Hudnall. Lexi Powell with a big RBI single to give Lynchburg a run of insurance and make it 
And time called. Roanoke will make a pitching change. We'll step aside and come back and tell you about the new arm for the Maroons when we return. Lynchburg with a run across, and now three consecutive innings are out in front, 6-4. Lauren Hoffman answers the call to the bullpen, ninth appearance of the season for Hoffman. Pitch nine and a third, holds a 1-0 record. ERA at three. Hoffman gets a fly ball to center and starts her day by retiring Kaylee Hackett for out number two. One run across so far in the bottom of the sixth. There was an RBI single from Lexi Powell. Give the Hornets that run of insurance. Sophie Tully returns to the plate. First pitch on the outside corner. Tully's gone one for two, also drawn a walk, scored a run in the fourth. There's a big RBI single last inning to tie the game up again. RBI sack fly from Anna Grace Terrell, who's on deck. Gave Lynchburg the lead. Wild pitch from Hoffman, allows both runners to advance a base. Holding all up to third. Powell behind at second. Wind up, pitch misses low. Hoffman again missing downstairs. 3 0 count now to Tully. Righty. Again misses low, and Tully doesn't have to lift the bat off her shoulders to reach first base. First walk issued by Hoffman. Line is not final for Hester. She's responsible. Two of the three runners on. Wild pitch. Play at the plate. Hudnall slides in safely after the wild pitch. Powell moves up to third. Tully now at second. Finish my point. Hester went through five and a third, gave up nine hits. That run. Will be charged to her, but as Huddall reached on fielding error from DeFaba, it's an unearned run. And it was three walks to six strikeouts for the starter Hester. Hoffman again missing low. 2 0 count for Terrell. Lynchburg designated player had an RBI sack fly for last time up. That broke the tie and put Lynchburg ahead 5 4. 
Two more runs this inning. The Hornets pushed all seven. They have scored from the fourth inning onward. Two one, hit hard, but straight to the shortstop. Burns who catches the line drive for out number three. Runners left on, but two more runs across for Lynchburg. Hornets jump ahead by three and take a 7 forward advantage into the top of the seventh. Maroons down to their final three outs. Top of the seventh inning, Lynchburg looking to close it down with Kaylee Dorsis back out after tossing a perfect top of the sixth. We'll face Rachel Serbaugh, Kate Houle, and Michaela Austin. Also, update for those looking forward to the men's lacrosse game. That has been pushed back to 8 o'clock. Traveling issues for Shenandoah. So a battle between the Hornets, men's lacrosse side. Come a little later tonight at 8 o'clock. Dorsis starts off top of the seventh. Missing outside to Serbaugh. Catcher, one for three, had a hitter last time up. It's a double. Here the righty swings through the 1 0 to make it 1 and 1. Sky out of play, first base side. Pitchers count now 1 and 2. Dorsus has retired all four she faced. Set down Carly Patterson, a pinch hitter to end the fifth, flying out to right. There's a ground out to first, to strike out, another fly out to right for the one, two, three, sixth. You got it, Serbaugh had a big swing of the bat in game one against Kaylee Dorsis, who was the starter for Lynchburg. It was a two run home run to open up today's scoring. Top of the first inning. Send to Lynchburg Sky and Sophie Tully just runs out of real estate on the first base side. Another 2 2 on the way from Dorsis. Down and outside. Full count to the Maroons catcher after Sir Ball. Pool, Austin, if any reach, then Lily Burns. Payoff pitch, fouled away. Lynchburg has split every home doubleheader this season. Looking for a winning game two to continue that trend. It's been in comeback fashion, specifically in game two. We trailed one nothing once we got to the bottom of the fourth. And in the bottom of the fifth, trailed by a single run for a three. But Lynchburg kept their head up. They've scored seven to the last three chances at the plate. Overcome two different deficits. Now find themselves up by three. 
Another payoff pitch to serve off. Cut on and missed. Second strike out of the day for Kaylee Dorsis. An emphatic start to the seventh. Kate Houle, one for two, singled, struck out, also been hit by a pitch. Dorsus misses high on the first pitch. Freshman, a save opportunity. This would be her third in the season and would break a tie between her and Charlton for a team best. Dorsus once again misses upstairs. center field. Powell slides, holds the hit to a single. Another hit for Hool, one on one down for Michaela Austin who represents the tying run. It'll be a pinch hitter instead for Roanoke. First pitch from Dorsis popped up, first base side. This is, I beg your pardon, this is still Michaela Austin. It sounded like we heard pinch hitter notification or announcement from the PA. Doesn't appear to be the case. That is Austin in the right-handed batter's box. Waiting on the off-speed pitch. Driving out towards left center field, splitting the difference between Dooley and Hackett. Goal hold, who went third. Don't close the door on this one yet, folks. One out double from Austin, puts two on in scoring position. The go ahead run is Lily Burns, who steps to the plate now. Burns picked up her first hit of the game, her last AB. We'll have a courtesy runner at first. Lauren Chapel. will run for Austin at second. Lead runner is Hool at third. Chapel behind her at second. Dorses to face Burns. Roanoke trails by three. Burns one for three this afternoon. Did not play in game one. First pitch swinging, sent to center. Hackett makes the catch on the warning track. Taggett gets scoring on the play as Cade Hool. Chapel moves up to third, but one run. Won't hurt Lynchburg here. A stellar play made by Hackett. They'll appeal the runner left early from second. Field umpire confirms that that is not the case. It's an RBI sack fly for Lily Burns, cutting into the deficit, making it 7-5. But if Hackett's not there, you're talking about a one-run game and Burns in scoring position as a tying run. Huge play made by Hackett. Still a runner on at third with two away. It was scheduled to be Caitlin Craghead. Instead, Adriana Rivera. It's a pinch hit opportunity, just like she did in game one. First pitch from Torsis at the knees and a cold strike one. Maroons down to their final out. Rivera represents the tying run. 
It's a 188 average, not including her AB in game one. One extra base hit, it was a triple and five RBIs this year for Adriana Rivera. Dorsis, meanwhile, surrendered a run in the top of the seventh, looking for her third save of the season. Elevates, misses the zone. The next scheduled hitter is supposed to be Riley Krogan, but might be another pinch hit spot for Coach Mitchell. Dorsis gets a cold strike to make it two and two with two away. Dorsis into the windup. Fouled away by Rivera. We'll see at least one more pitch. The wind swirls and now blows towards center field. Dorsis, another 2 2. Another foul ball from Rivera. Dorsis, just off the outside corner. It's now a 3-2 count. A 3-2. Sliced out of play. Roanoke trailing by a pair of runs. Looking to get runners on, one hitter at a time. Rivera putting up a great battle against Dorsis, looking to keep the Maroons alive. Another payoff pitch, and again, it's fouled off. Lynchburg dropped game one, 4-2. Find themselves back into a two-run contest, this time out in front, 7-5. Payoff pitch, cut on and missed. Rivera goes down swinging. Third strike out of the day for Kaylee Dorsis. Nets the freshman, her third save of the season. And Lynchburg through a comeback, scoring seven over the final three chances at the plate. Storm back and take down Roanoke, 7-5. The Maroons do get a run across in the top of the seventh to add to the intrigue of this matchup. But Roanoke takes game one for two, Lynchburg. Snags game two, seven, five, and two run win for each side really signals that these two teams are as even as it gets. And I think that's gonna be a trend you hear a lot throughout the rest of ODAC play, especially between those at the top, Lynchburg, Randolph, Macon, Bridgewater, and Roanoke, of course, in the mix as well. But what a great day for softball. Split doubleheader between Lynchburg and the number 10 team in the country, Roanoke, and it becomes the fourth win against a ranked opponent over the last eight games played for Lynchburg and the Hornets winning five of those eight games. That's going to do it for us at Moonfield. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and hanging out with us this Saturday afternoon. Roanoke, after splitting the doubleheader, now 18-8 and eight on the season and 4-4 four and four in conference play. Lynchburg, since it's 17-15, and 7-3 in conference action. I'd like to give a shout-out to my director, George Diamond, the rest of our fantastic LHSN broadcast crew. My name is TJ Winger, and until next time, we are... Signing off.